you found yourself at the junction where worlds meet. Politics. Civility? How about honesty in this country, folks? Entertainment. I don't like entertainment. And a whole bunch of other stuff. It's about having a healthy body image. You have a very unhealthy body. You should have a horrible body image. Not a big home improvement market in Detroit. <laughs> We are definitely going to get letters. You're listening to Talk Radio's Strangest Animal. You're a strange animal. That's what I know. You're getting louder with Crowder. But you're a strange animal. I got to follow. Oh, I'm in the speedy to sound. Oh, that sound. That's the sound of the weekend. I am your host, Stephen Crowder, louder with Crowder.com. For all sources, producing with me in video studio, as always, is Jared, who is not gay. You can follow him on Twitter at NotGayJared. I fulfilled my legal obligations. Draw our conclusions. Are we good? All of that was factual. Thank you. All of that was factual. And yep. we have Appreciate some it. additional people producing in studio. We do. We don't need to bring them up if they don't want to come. But we have uh, my brother filling in here today. We, we have Jordan. We have uh, Edward is the voice who you hear, a man who's been helping out building mm-hmm. the studio, all the sound. So thank them. They are the silent heroes here. Can you turn up my program a little bit for me? Maybe? Give me a little one? I don't know. Big show. Big show. We'll get to some stories, but huge show. Alex Jones. First off. Alex first Jones. Off Alex Jones. What was that side profile? Just to prove you can't? That was just don't. because we can't. Don't do it. Right there. Just Alex Jones, <laughs> Sally Cohn, Sally Cohn, and uh, Cassie J of Red Pill Documentary. Cassie J of Red Pill. Red yes. Pill fame. Yeah. So big show. And by the way, we already got complaints. Many complaints. Some of... Some of which were for Alex Jones, some of which were for Sally Cohn. Pretty so equal, actually. It's pretty, the, yeah. I don't agree with either of them on everything. I agree with Sally on almost nothing. That's not the And point. I agree with Alex on, you know, on, on, on quite a bit, and then not so much like on chemtrails. Yeah, exactly. There's a give and take. There's a give and take. So, uh, by the way, I would also have... Is my sound on? Your sound's on. Yeah. Someone said that I wasn't. No, you're loud and clear. You're I don't stupid. know what's happening. That was my mother who was watching, and she wrote it without a plural. Steven, sound not on. We're good? We're good. All right, I trust Edward. Edward, you, I trust you. Yeah, you give me a <laughs> thumbs up. All right. So e- either that's, he's saying it's correct, or he's telling me to stick it where the sun don't shine. I have no idea. No one else. It could go either that's way. That's the problem with these new hires. They're so disrespectful. Uh, big announcement coming on later in the program. Yes. A um, couple of things we want to talk about. We have to get to some, the big reason we want to have Alex Jones on is because of this issue that just broke today, fake news. Uh, okay. We'll talk about that with Facebook. YouTube has been going after some people quite a bit now. They're trying to uh, <clears throat> create this ultimate system of control, whereas it used to be subscriber generated. By the way, if you're watching or you're subscribed, you now need to hit the little bell to receive notifications. You have to subscribe twice. So we apologize for that. If you're not getting notification, well, if you're not getting notifications, you're not hearing this. That's the problem. You're not. This is going either. You are it. not the resistance. Anyways. Um, but. Uh, one second, I got this going on. I have no idea what's happening. Courtney, Courtney wanted me to talk about this first. So this week, I don't know if you've noticed this, all of a sudden the left really cares about Syria. I know. That's the big deal this week. Uh, radio silence for a long time, except when they had to acknowledge the rapey nature of the Syrian migrants. Like, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Or they were demanding that everyone accept Syrians and they were using them as political pawns, yep. refugees, telling Republicans you're racist if you don't want to bring them into your neighborhood so they can rape your women. <clears throat> Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. No, we shouldn't judge. Just ask Trudeau. Who if you kill your judge? enemies, they win. We? But now, I, I, I'm trying to see if you can maybe think of why this might be. That's all it is. All it is is Aleppo today. All it is is Syria. I don't know. Do it, Jerry. We have some of this, the, the news stories everywhere talking about Syria. Uh, well, Syria started in t- 2011. How did it start? How did the civil war begin? What happened with Assad? What happened with, with Hillary Clinton when she was at the tiller of the ship? What happened with Barack Obama and his red lines? Remember those? Those yes. were adorable. Red, red yeah, lines. Red lines. Red lines with Assad. Red I'm, lines with Iran. I'm super serious this time, Super you serious, super you guys. Serious. I'm going to write you a letter. So here we are now, and they want to lay all of this at the feet of the Republican president. Don't be fooled by what's happening. Syria is absolutely Obama's problem. He can't blame that one on George Bush. He wanted to blame Iraq, and they tried to do this sort of like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but with Al-Qaeda and Syria. And, oh, you know what, let's, let's, let's blame this on George Bush. And now they want to put that in Donald Trump's pocket. Donald Trump, for all of his faults or shortcomings, A, is not big on war. He's not a big war guy. That's the reason why a lot of libertarians and sort of people like Alex Jones liked him. And he called out Barack Obama as a national embarrassment for his red line and policies in Syria. So uh, we'll have probably some experts coming on. I think we have a general 
uh, somewhere here before Christmas to talk about Syria and to talk about mm-hmm. Aleppo. Uh, no, it's not Gary Johnson. And we will discuss that more. But I, I, my, my point here is, since I'm not an expert on it, I, I have a cursory knowledge. Thanks, Fox. Don't be fooled by the timeline and be aware of what's happening. Speaking of timelines, this comes to us from Facebook this week. Facebook is now going to sort your news feed. How nice of them. For fake news. They're going to sort, label, and bury fake news, which sounds good, right? It sounds good on the outset. It sounds, okay, I understand it. Fake news is bad, right? Fake news getting in feeds, especially all the clickbait out there, these, these websites that just create new domains, and they, they show you the ad of Oprah on a treadmill or mm-hmm. Ellen DeGeneres crying. That's one of my favorites, just Ellen DeGeneres crying. Or when it says, these 15 child stars died too young, and there's Macaulay Culkin. Like, yeah. He died, and you click it, and it's like, oh, no, he didn't. And then you the, click it and realize... They didn't even originally write that. They just copy pasted it from somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, they copy pasted it from hat somewhere tip. else. Yeah, hat tip. Yeah. H slash T for those who are too lazy for hat tip. So this sounds on a surface like, oh, well, we want to get rid of fake news until you realize who's going to be a part of this <laughs> overseeing body committee with fake news. Oh, look at that. Snopes and ABC News. So ABC News is going to get to decide who uh, is real and fake news. I guarantee you before the Brian Williams saga, NBC would have been on there as well. It's just been so obvious with their lies. You know, George Stephanopoulos, of course, uh, buddies to the Clintons. You needn't search that far to see executives and heads of the network at ABC who are directly related to either DNC high-ranking officials or the Clintons. Of course, George Stephanopoulos is the most obvious one because he's a troll with a show and you can fit him in your back pocket. So I understand I, I think we want to get rid of fake news. Yes, I get it. I understand. I think we can all agree on news that is actually entirely fake. Mm-hmm. But then the problem becomes, who are the arbiters of what is true and what is fake news? And YouTube is doing this as well. YouTube is now determining what you want to see. The recommended feed is taking over the subscription feed. Well, what's the best indicator of what it is that you want to watch? Maybe the channels that you actively chose to subscribe to. YouTube says, no, 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 no. Here are breasts. We know better. And Matthew Santoro's <laughs> top 10 list. This is what's going to happen with Facebook. That's the problem. And let, let, let's be real here. You think anyone in Silicon Valley, you think anyone working under Zuckerberg has a Make America Great? I was going to say top hat. It's not a top hat. It's a, it's not a top hat. hat. In a matter of speaking, if, if you go out probably in West Virginia, it's a top hat. That's yeah. formal attire. No, none of them. They get around in this circle where they all agree and they'll determine what's fake news. And fake news is whatever they don't like, right? That's, that, that's what's going to happen. Let's get into the ABC News uh, here. George Stephanopoulos, just to give you an idea as to how far off the beam, how out of touch they are, Stephanopoulos of ABC News, his wife was on The View and was talking about their 14-year-old daughter <laughs> when Donald Trump lost and just how much it upset her. This is what upset her the most. A 14-year-old getting upset about the election and screaming no abortions really loudly. I have a 14-year-old upset And I was as like, well. you haven't kissed a boy yet. Don't use that word so flippantly. But she <laughs> managed to women's... First off, you're a horrible mother. I assume, well, mother. I mean, she's married to George Stephanopoulos. Yes. Who knows what's hanging in that closet? No one knows. Who knows what power tools could Probably chip a tooth? Probably half the Hillary skeletons yes. start. Well, my 14-year-old, her number one concern was not having access to abortions. Okay, time to check your daughter's texts, first off. Uh, second, she said this so flippantly as though everyone, there wouldn't be people in the audience who are horrified, as though half the country doesn't think that's absolutely terrible. And here's something that's so telling about that. I said, you're, you're barely even kissing boys yet. Don't use that word so flippantly. It's the word. How about don't jam scissors in a baby's head and suck it out of a tube and leave it in a wastebasket to die? How about that? How about don't kill other living human beings? How about that? No, it's the word, right? It's always about the word with the left because they can't actually address the issue of morality because they claim that there is none. Remember Donald Trump? Donald Trump was grabbed by the pussy, still funny. They were all about the naughty word. If they were smart, they would have gone after the content, the idea that this woman was married, the, the, the problems and the inconsistent. Instead, they go, well, it's, a, it's a bad word. Abortion is a word you shouldn't use so flippantly. Well, what about the heart of that word, ABC? What about the heart of your 14-year-old daughter who is likely flippant? I don't want to, can we, we yeah, 14-year-old, likely a floozy. A floozy. She's floozy. a floozy. She's a dime store harlot, see? She's a good time gal. Why is that at the top of her priority list? Making sure that abortions are easy and act like, like that's just, I, I don't know about you, but that's one of those things kind of like, uh, I'm trying to think, Christmas story. Mm. You know? Said he saw some grizzly bears by Plassey's candy store. Ooh, it came out of his mouth and he realized he shouldn't have said it. It was a great reveal. She had abortion on the mind, sweetheart. 
So these people, the Stephanopoulos, the people who are direct Clinton aides or former Clinton aides or the Brian Williams of the world or the Snopes of the world or Reuters. Remember when Reuters got caught? I don't know if you remember this. It was blatant. They were cropping out a, uh, a ship, an Israeli flotilla with a knife from Hamas, basically at the throat <laughs> of the Israeli, and it was cropped out. So it was actually cropped out. So it I looked like the Israelis that. were terrible. I I, I'm pretty that. sure it was Reuters. Maybe, maybe Jordan can bring that up at some point. These people have been caught in lie after lie after lie. Eh, they're not fake news. The person who maybe talks about WikiLeaks is going to be fake news. The person who might actually tilt the election, as we saw in 2016, is going to be fake news. The people who actually resonate with the American populace are going to be fake news. It's not going to be Stephanopoulos and his abortion-fascinated uh, uh, daughter. It's not going to be Mrs. Stephanopoulos with whatever the accoutrements are in their bedroom. I'm saying it's probably weird. He is so tiny you can fit him in your back pocket, mm. and, and she looks aggressive. She does. She looks like she could hurt me. Well, that, there's, it's not a, 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 <laughs> that's not a litmus test that we want to use. My, my, my aunt looks like she could. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure she has hurt you. She has. That's Only emotional. Really insensitive for you bringing it up Speaking on of which, I was watching the Rudolph Christmas special. Yes. How awful is that? It is awful. Santa is just borderline racist, and Rudolph the is way just, you... they excoriate him for a red nose. I was sitting there as a kid yeah. going, like, is, is, is it me? 2016 eyes change things. You can tweet me at Escrider uh. what you think about that Rudolph Christmas special, but it is horrifying and terrifying. I half expect Hermie the Elf to say, oh my God, no more abortions. That's what a horrible, and then, and then Ms. Stephanopoulos comes in and says, no, 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 that's okay. You can still that's okay, be a dentist. That's okay, just, just don't worry about dentists it. Dentists can perform abortions. It's really lax with the rules now, Planned Parenthood. Yeah. You, just, you just listen, just file out the right paperwork. Uh, what do we have? Uh, oh, that's right. We have Alex Jones up after this. And we have something uh, that I think you're going to want to see that has to do with students and professors. And um, I don't know, it's offensive. Stay tuned. Who are you in my car? Oh, you're not Gay Jared on the shelf. I come complimentary with every Mug Club sign up. Now through the new year. But I already am a Mug Club member. I did join the Mug Club. But I come free of charge. I don't. I don't want you complimentary. No, I. No, I don't want you at all. Be that as it may, I'm still here to tell you about the Mug Club. Ninety-nine dollars annually, sixty-nine for students and vets. Gives you access to all of Lot Earth Crowder's daily content and all of CRTV's content, including Mark Levin, Mark Stein, and Michelle Malkin. How did you, how did you get in here in the first place? Slim Jim. No, 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 wait, wait. No, 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 no. Ah, ah, oh, no. No, 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 no. Jared, what are you doing? Shooting bad guys. With what? By AR-15. Where'd you get it? AR-15.com. Enunciate it more clearly so our audience can hear. AR-15.com. That's better. They sell guns now? Yeah, they do. Are they any good? They're the best. Where from? AR-15.com. Kaboom. Kaboom. They really make that sound? They didn't have the budget for sound effects. Kaboom. Kaboom. Oh, there's another one. Kaboom. You got him! With what? By AR-15. From where? AR-15.com. Hey, how do you know they're bad guys? They're reds and burkas. Kaboom! That's racist! Boxing became Jazzercise Act. Alex mm. Jones, after the break, we have coming up. Uh, we don't have a ton of time with this, so I'm sure you've seen this. Is there a name to this video? Because it was trending. I don't even know. Or is it just Martin Sheen's borderline retarded? Yeah, that's what I was going with. That's and also I, celebrities who also do borderline retarded things good, too. Yes. 
I think that's the name of the video. Uh, let's just start. So this is just to set it up. This was Martin Sheen and a bunch of celebrities. Whenever there's the white apple-like background and Tim Cook doesn't appear, you know you're in for some political crap <laughs> from celebrities. Uh, so it's a bunch of celebrities lined up begging electors to go against the will of the people. Uh, of course, we're talking about the Electoral College. Because uh, now they're for just, it. Now they're for it. Yeah, yeah, now they're for it. And I love how they invoke the Federalist Papers and everything. It's like, well, what about Federalism? Well, what? what? We what? really care about that a lot. What happened with the same-sex really marriage thing? What happened with not allowing trannies to take a dump in the middle of the floor in North Carolina? No, 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 no. They don't have the right to do that. But they have the right to go completely against the will of the people. They technically do have the right, right? There's the technical law, I understand, and there's the spirit of the law. They don't have respect uh, nor a, just a rudimentary understanding of either. Let's just start running through this, and uh, we'll play and pause. Jared, let's go. Republican members of the Electoral College, this message is for you. Mm. As you know, our founding fathers built the Electoral College to safeguard music. the American people yeah. from the dangers of a demagogue and to ensure that the presidency it only goes the to someone of a demagogue. who it was is from the dangers of the majority. Endowed with a tyrannical mob. Qualifications. An eminent degree. Few celebrity we don't know. She's someone who is highly qualified for the job. The Electoral College was created specifically the guy does a good James to prevent Cromwell, an for those unfit can't candidate from becoming president. There are 538 members of the Electoral College. You and just 36 other conscientious Republican electors can make a difference okay. by voting your conscience on December right, 19th and thereby shaping the How future of our nation. I'm not asking like you to him. vote for Hillary Clinton. Okay, pause. Asking. Pause. I, that guy went to New Orleans and had a voodoo uh, shaman shrink his head. Yes. That's smaller than the rest of his his neck. I don't even know how that occurs. I've never seen that in nature. It is a activity is only fit for Sodom. Oh, God. Or, uh, <laughs> well, that's very likely. And it shrunk his head. I feel like if I look back at him, I'm going to turn into a pillar of salt. Um, okay, really quick. Let's set this. It wasn't to stop a demagogue, right? The Electoral College was to protect. We've talked about this. The minority from the mob rule of the majority. That's why it exists. It exists so that someone doesn't simply have to campaign New York, San Francisco, Detroit, Chicago, boom, done, wrap it up, promise them free crap. That's why it exists. Not because somebody said mean things on Twitter. But I'm sure they're going to encourage people to think for themselves and to make their own decisions here and, and they want people to engage in a rational, just go. You to vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm not asking you to vote for Hillary Clinton. As you know, the Constitution gives electors the right to vote for any eligible person. Any eligible person, no matter which party they belong to. But it should certainly be someone you consider especially competent. Especially yeah. competent. Oh, jeez. That's, oh. uh, that's the lady, that's the, the, the Muppet oh. drummer lady. There, that's exactly <laughs> what that is. You should totally, like, vote for Hillary Clinton, you guys. I know, we're getting into ad hominem because we'll wrap this up afterward. But, uh, yeah, you know what? People did. People did vote someone who they thought was competent. They saw a murderer in Hillary Clinton and a guy who's probably not super smart, probably not the best pick, but certainly a lot better than Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And they voted. There's nothing new. Roll clip. As president of the United States of America, by voting your conscience, you and other brave Republican electors can give the House of Representatives the option to select a qualified candidate for the presidency. <laughs> I stand with you. I stand no, you don't. with you. You I don't. I stand with you. I stand with you in support and solidarity with conservatives, independents, and liberals. <laughs> and all How long is this, Jerry? I don't know. Too long. All American right. Okay. No. Here's the deal. They don't voice. stand with you. They stand with you if you do exactly what it is that they want you to do. And what they want you to do is go back on your vote or go back on the candidate your constituency voted for, and then say that I stand with you, so they can act like, oh, gee, golly, we're part of the people. First off, I bet you most dumbasses in that video didn't even vote, including <laughs> that comedian, by the way, who I used to love from Breaking Bad and Mr. Show. I forgot his name right now. Uh, I'm sure George, what is, what is his name? Uh, gosh, I can't even remember. Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. And you just destroy your career when you do this because you ruin, there's one thing to have a political opinion. It's another thing to actually insult the intelligence of your audience. Hey, listen, you guys voted or they're talking to a, a, a they're talking to the electorate at this point. Okay. Well, listen, uh, we know that you have this role to fill. We know that people voted for this guy, but we want you to vote for the person we want you to vote for. Or if it's not the person you, we want to vote for, just anyone but the person you actually voted for so we can kick this tin can on down the trail and then we can call the next guy racist because you can bet your ass if they chose John Kasich who the left loves to act as though they're buddies with now because he's moderate if the House of Representatives said hey okay John Kasich you'd hear no 
he's racist. Damn it, we gotta go through this again. Here, cue another white tape celebrity video. That's what's going to happen. They're not your friends. They're never going to be your friends. Appeasing crocodiles is futile and stupid. And that's actually a disservice to crocodiles because at least they have tough skin. <laughs> These are butter soft bitches who can't do anything on their own telling you to vote they would. Here, here's something too. The media's been biased. We've talked about that, I understand that, but Hollywood is, is, is so much worse uh, just because they feel compelled and they don't even disguise it to give political and cultural And they advice. can't take a hint this season. No. This one, they can't take a hint. No, and it's been way worse this yeah. season because way it used worse. to be veiled and now they're just like, no, no, you gotta vote Hillary, you gotta vote Hillary, hashtag I'm with her. And now they're saying, well, listen, we're not, hashtag I'm with you. It's so transparent with, I mean, particularly the actors who are only as valuable as like the publicist and the agents they have. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about directors, you're talking about some people with some sort of creative input, I can understand it, but a lot of these people aren't. Like, you're the token Asian gay from Star Trek. Why am I listening to you about yeah. federalism? Like Courtney says, fire publicist, hire a proctologist. Yes. You need fire. some help. <laughs> this is, listen, this is an industry of people who don't get out of bed until 10 a.m. This is an industry of people with the highest depression rate, suicide rate, and ironically enough, the only place in the world where the divorce rate is actually over 50%. It's virtually 100% in the entertainment industry. Okay, and, and, and people can say, oh, well, this sounds judgmental. Well, yeah, you're damn right I'm judging you, especially when you're telling me what to think and how to vote. You're, are you judging me? Yes, I'm judging you. I'm not calling you racist. I'm not calling you xenophobic. I'm not calling you transphobic. I'm watching your video. I'm listening to your arguments, and I'm calling you a dumb bag of fecal matter. I think that's an appropriate judgment to make, Mr. Gay Asian from Star Trek and other actors I can't name, except for Bob Odenkirk. I think that's pretty fair. You make the judgment, everyone's racist who disagrees with you. I make the judgment, you're stupid. Alex Jones coming up next. Stay tuned. You know, Dasher and Dancer, Prancer and Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall how exploitative this Christmas special really is? R Rudolph gets screwed. It's pretty rough. Set as borderline racist. You you you'll see what I'm talking about. This is a nice man, good guest. Uh, he's looking at the look like he's doing the ostrich dance now. No, 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 you can't. Well, let me introduce you first, That's sir. That's the paradise bird you were doing, isn't it? It, it is. It is pretty much. Uh, Infowars.com, you know him, very controversial figure, was kind enough to host me on his program this week. Alex Jones, at Real Alex Jones. Thank you for being on, sir. It's good to be here. Thank you. And I want to say hi to Rex, and because uh, he's a big fan. He watches uh, every show. Really? Oh, is it now Rex is your, uh, I don't want to reveal any personal He's my 14-year-old son. Okay, well, good. Thank you very much. Because I, I never want to say Rex is your son, and then ISIS cross-references, and I'm in trouble. Uh, no, 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 exactly. No, he's already been public. Uh, he's already you know, been on the show for a few years off and on, but uh, he, no, he loves your show. So, so as a 14-year-old saying he's a conservative or a fan of this, that's the same as, as being outed now. It is kind of in Austin, but I got to tell you, I uh, there, there's kind of a youth rebellion against all the fake liberal oppression of political correctness. I've got to say... He goes to a pretty mainline school, and it doesn't matter if the kids are black or white or Hispanic. I mean, most of them hate Hillary Clinton and uh, actually like Donald Trump or hate social justice warriors. And it's their big entertainment yeah. is to actually watch you and other folks like Gavin McGinnis make fun of social justice warriors. So, I mean, I'm not kidding when I told you on my show that, I mean, I go to, you know, like their parties. I go to pool parties. I go to, you know, boat parties or whatever. Uh, with my son, also my younger daughter, who's 12, and even the 12-year-old girls are sh starting to watch. So the big hot thing for about a year and a half is making fun of social justice warriors, <laughs> and it just doesn't go away. So yeah. it's, it's, it's and, and they all watch my show too, but it's kind of like, 
oh yeah, and then like you know, kind of the seniors watch me, but uh, and, or it's the seniors watch <laughs> you too. But the, the, the big hot thing with the freshmen uh, and and also eighth graders, it's not an insult; it's, it's a good thing. I mean, that's the key demographic Democrats wish they could get to brainwash them, but they get they're being force fed all of this, yeah. so they're rebelling. Well, you know, it's a good point, and you would know this as well. I've noticed a distinct shift on YouTube. We were talking about that on your show when I was starting any of the things that I espoused on there were wildly unpopular and downvoted and now we're able to make inroads with with people who used to frankly hate us and watch the Young Turks have you I know you've always been popular but have you seen that shift occur yeah, absolutely I mean we've always I've been on the air it's been slow growth for 21 years almost 22 years in mm -hmm. April it'll be 22 in a, a three months starting off on local access but in six months got a local radio show and then from there it got syndicated just a few years so, you know a few affiliates but now We've gone from 170 affiliates to over 250 just in the last year. It was the whole Trump effect kind of breaking through the political correctness. So it's been exponential growth, but in the last year and a half, just parabolic shooting straight up. Yeah, I, I have definitely noticed that. And uh, you, you would, I hate to use it, I don't know if this is an insult, you're more a part of the mainstream now. Um, before, I think you more so were known for more conspiracy sure, theories. For sure, the more underground. And, yeah. Exactly, but I mean, what's happened is the dinosaur media the legacy media has completely collapsed by their own annex and WikiLeaks and their arrogance. So, you know, it's kind of like they collapsed. And so now just a lot of people that won't watch them anymore that have totally right. given up on them have just come to the internet looking, uh, you know, for the truth. And, and so just everybody gets a bigger audience because it's not that we all have the truth or are all perfect, but we're trying to tell the truth. And so now it's kind of atomized out into thousands, like you said on my show, thousands of moderate size uh, media systems, not just four or five big giant you know, uh, colossal uh, systems. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a good point. And hopefully, listen, hopefully this continues to happen. We'll talk more as uh, in the coming uh, segments about the YouTube algorithm change. And like you said, they're really trying to get a grip on this and more control. And I bet you Google is is probably not feeling too good because of their big bet on Hillary. They didn't quite hedge it. Um, speaking of which, we're talking about this. What, now, is it which publication? Is it the Freedom Press who is talking about you? Associated Press? Uh, who wants to shut InfoWars down? Oh, I, I mean, there's a video on InfoWars.com titled The Crucifixion of Alex Jones. There's another one called The, the uh, Character Assassination, and, and they're using me as a beta test, taking clips out of context, taking satire out of context. They'll probably take where I was actually like an ostrich and say he's mentally ill and, you know, sh and probably cut to you. I mean, that's what... Yeah, exactly. That's what they do. They deceive all day or racist. That doesn't work anymore. So now it's Russian agents. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. And so... In this compilation, it's MSNBC, CNBC, CNN saying Alex Jones must be shut down. And now Nancy Pelosi's daughter that's pushing this thing to have the electors overturn Trump's election, she's going, Alex Jones has people death threatening me. I'm scared. He said, I'm, he said, come after me. No, I didn't. I said, you're running this thing with the electors to try to overthrow the election. So they're screaming that our speech is violent right. and that we're going to cause violence. Uh, look, the Washington Post last week said, over the weekend said, Trump's going to get people killed because he tweeted back at the union head, we talked about that, uh, who was bitching that he only brought back 85% of the jobs from Carrier yeah. when the union head couldn't keep any of them, or Obama couldn't, and Trump said, no wonder you lost the jobs. You're like running them off. What's your problem? They're like, oh my God, the president tweeted back, he's going to get the union head killed. The yeah. whining of these people, and they're openly saying, well, we're for the First Amendment, but... It stops with Alex Jones. We've got to <laughs> shut him down. This is all over the main channels. Yeah. He, we just have to we have to get him off the air. We need Google and Facebook and the big brains to just shut him and the rest of the alt right off. Well, you know what's they funny need to is, just go away. Yeah, I disagree with you on, on quite a few issues, but I know even Paul Joseph Watson does, and we've talked about that, and he works for you. You are at least willing to host different points of view. It's funny, you know, one of my earliest videos was me waterboarding myself dressed as Nancy Pelosi. So I would have thought that if she'd be upset about anything, that would be the one. But um, yeah, I think. Have a I, reasonable discussion. Yeah, a reasonable discussion. Okay, uh, speaking of which, so you were. Oh, like by the way, the Young Turks are in the video too saying, he's crazy, shut him down. Yeah. See, see they're panicking because we're kicking killed an their butt up and down the street. They're a joke. Yeah, yeah, it really it really is a pretty rough go for them. And you know what? I don't think it has to be that way. I know there's always an ebb and flow and you're the you're the new hot ticket and then you're gone. But um, the arrogance people are sick of the arrogance. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, OK, so speaking of which, you were a big like you said, you were kind of more underground now with the mainstream because you didn't like George W. Bush. You didn't like, obviously, Barack Obama um, and Trump. You were you openly I don't know if you endorsed, but supported. So what would your report card be now? It's a weird transition period. This is my opinion. I said this 
last week. I tried to reserve judgment until they take office. This is the phase where someone is most likely to promise all things to all people. So we don't know exactly what it looks like yet. Um, what would you say overall is your, your, your feeling about what's happened since he's been uh, elected uh, president? Elected. I would give him a B, okay. a B minus on who he's appointing from their histories. But I give him an A plus, like a 97 on his delivery. I mean, yeah. he's already getting uh, Ford to come back. He's talking about just equalizing the corporate income tax, which is free trade, fair mm -hmm. trade, to bring jobs back. Uh, we already see the stock market adding over a trillion dollars. We see the dollar climbing the strongest since 2013. Uh, we see the Trump effect, the Trump way, already acting like a commander in chief, uh, creating a lot of confidence. Yeah. And so I give him an A plus. Uh, on what he's already delivered, uh, operating as commander in chief when he's still, you know, 35 days out. Uh, but some of these appointments are pretty establishment. But here's the deal: if they operate, I mean, I mean, I mean, if I was, you know, 200 years ago and needed to find somebody to be my navigator into, say, you know, some port back then, you'd have to have somebody from the port come out on the little port vessel, get on your ship, and then navigate you into the channel. So, so let's say some navigator has been bad in the past or done some, you know, crony capitalist stuff, whatever. Once Trump gets them on board, if they carry out his populist operation of Americana, uh, which I don't think is really conservative, it's just bring back Americana. If he does that and, you know, does stuff like keep saying Merry Christmas, I'm going to stick that down your throat, busting the back uh, and, and, and the wavos of political correctness, then I'll say he's delivered and he's the next George Washington. If he gets insulated by all the beautiful people in Washington and, you know, becomes uh, arrogant or whatever, uh, then I'll have a serious problem with him. But again, at least he's not Hillary. Well, who, 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 who was out to get us? Yes. Well, I think I, I think so too. Um, I, I I am a little concerned. For example, like with the the, the three billion, one of his uh, appointees said, you know, as far as three billion deficit tr uh, spending, I thought it was bad when Barack Obama did it. I still think it's bad now. I am curious as to your thoughts. I, I know because you've openly had some issues with with uh, Governor Rick Perry there, from former governor in Texas, and like Rex Tillerson. Those seem like the kind of people who you would really not be a huge fan of. All right, folks. Uh, you, uh, confuse you know the fact that i'm mad at big corrupt co corporations that make their money out of government deals and out of monopolies and oligopolies and combines and right. uh you know controlled competition as john d rockefeller the first said competition is a sin rex tillerson battled the rockefellers took standard oil away from them in 2006 it, uh, funded the movement to expose man global warming as a fraud and so was their enemy now he had to then suddenly say he was for it or they were going to remove him but he fought them Rex Tillerson brings a lot of jobs to America. He's, okay. he's an innovator. I like Rex Tillerson. He's one of the best salesmen in the world. He'll make a great Secretary of State, in my opinion. Okay. Now, when you start talking about Rick Perry, this is a guy that was a Democrat. He took money from uh, Big uh, Pharma to say Gardasil was the law when it was an experimental drug they couldn't even get approved. But by the government saying it's mandated, a governor can basically get it a FDA approval by emergency decree. So they used him to do that to then force basically an experimental drug that they admittedly right. uh, you know had a lot of really bad side effects. Well, I know you've talked uh, so, about that. So would you would you put that under what, what was your reaction when you found out that he was going to be appointed by by President elect Donald Trump? You know, if he was put over the FDA, I would have a heart attack. Uh, you know, uh, because he's done bad stuff when it comes to drugs. Yeah. He's done some good things on guns and other stuff. He kind of got better as time went on. He, I mean, right. is he a chameleon or or did he show his true colors as more of a conservative? Perry's gotten better over time, so now I don't hate him. Uh, but but if you look at the things he's done, let's say, if he's going to head up energy, he was anti-carbon tax, anti-global warming. So in that position, yeah. then I think he's a you know good pick. Okay. Um, what about Treasury? I always get his name wrong. Steve Stephen Mnuchin. Munchkin. Mnuchin. Mnuchin. I always read it. Uh, For, former Goldman Sachs guy. People no, say, oh my God, Goldman Sachs. I probably had no exaggeration. Ten former managing directors or high-level Goldman Sachs folks on the left and right. People like Nomi Prince, who says the whole, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs is corrupt. You have to be there. It's bigger than 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 J.P. Morgan. It basically runs half the world's finances. Goldman mm -hmm. Sachs is the king. It's the top of the pyramid. So if you're a top player, you're in Goldman Sachs. I know people that are pretty high level Goldman Sachs that that I have dinner with every once in a while that are anti New World Order and say, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's like saying Goldman Sachs is so big, it's like saying it's a, a continent or something. I mean, you know, yeah. it, it, I mean, it, it, it's a very diverse group. So if you're looking at it. He is against one-sided trade deals. He does want a strong America. He is an anti-globalist. Right. So here's the deal. He's kind of an American imperialism, right-wing fat cat. I'll, I, I'm not pushing right-wing imperialism, okay? But I'll take corporate free market imperialism any day over austerity, communism, 
uh, picking the winners and losers. So sure. he's the better end of Goldman Sachs and uh, not in the in crowd. That's why they're having a conniption fit. Yeah, well, because I know, you know, the reason I bring it up is because a lot of people gave Ted Cruz flack because of his wife's association with Goldman Sachs, which was not, And you know, CFR membership. Yeah, yeah, but still, I mean, I'm, I just, I always want to no, no, try no, to be but hey, Early on, I said it's fine. Yeah. If you're at the top of banking, and, and she was, you know, mid-level, I wouldn't say she's at the top as of As long it, as you're against the bailouts, as long as you're against the big, like you said, the, the corporate bailouts. Policies matter. Right. Policies. What yeah. you act, yeah, Christ said, judge a tree by its fruits. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I'm going to judge these trees by their fruits. Right. Yeah. Well, exactly. That's my and that was my issue. You know, again, when we were dealing with Ted Cruz going back and a lot of this election brought out, I think, a lot of ugliness. My my position was, listen, I don't care if you work with a big bank as long as you don't support the idea of bailing out big banks. You know, I don't care if you're big business. I don't care if you're small business. I care that you're a good business. That you're an honest business. So, I mean, going back to even what you said. Uh, we're talking about the corporate tax rates. I hope Donald Trump lowers that, as he said he would, and probably thinks twice on punishing companies, like we said, who have to escape these the clutches of these unions and make it a fair playing field so that people want to do business in the states as opposed to being scared to leave and being unprofitable. Because sure, I think it's an ugly window, as, as you said on my show the other day, uh, a, a very, very ugly window into he brings back 1,080-something of the 1,400 jobs and the guy viciously goes on CNN and MSNBC and goes, you lied. I want them all. Yeah. And I want this other company in our town, which he's working to get back. And it's just like, whoa. And I want card check vote to make sure I know who likes Donald Trump and we can send a message to their families at their house. That's one thing. There are a few policies I try and find common ground with the left. When they're against charter schools, I don't get it. When they're sure, sure. Unions were probably a good idea you know, busting up the Rockefellers 100 years ago. But now they've become in many areas a mafia. Yes. Well, you know, we have that's the sound of a bump. We'll have Alex Jones, uh, Infowars.com, after this to talk more about. Well, I don't know. We'll find something. It'll always be fun. It'll always be fun. The attack. Oh, come and join the mob club unless you are a fan. You'd probably rather watch Young Turks and Pondle sent us back. The Daily Show is all you'll need to get you off the rack. Oh, join the mod club, you f**k, don't be a f**k. Oh, join the mod club, you f**k. When it's time to party, we will party hard. All right, we are back. I think we have all of our audio issues resolved. Infowars.com. Alex Jones, controversial figure. It's funny. We disagree on a, Well, we have Sally Cohn on today, so I certainly disagree with her on nearly everything, with Alex Jones on some, but we could have reasonable discussions, of course. We were talking about this before the break, so now name up for grabs. Alex, Carly Fiorina. Uh, now, I, I think this is where we would differ. I had her on my program before her surge in the debates. I think, uh, I don't know about this role with National Security Advisor, but I, I, I like her. What are your thoughts? I don't dislike her, and I, and I don't want to bash her because I really love James Woods, who's a big supporter of her. But I'd love to get him on sometime instead of yeah. just seeing him, you know, on Twitter where he now is left because of all the censorship. Uh, I don't think she did that good a job at uh, Hewlett Packard. I mean, she kind of chopped it up, sold parts of it off, laid a bunch of people off. I'm not saying she's bad. I'm all for women uh, in government, but what's her background in national security? I just don't think she has it. I think it's a tokenism. Mm -hmm. And then again. Uh, I mean, I think she's an articulate, nice lady. I just don't think her CEO ship is, is is that sterling, and I just don't think she has the national security uh, background. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, and, and I think you know he may have put too many generals in too. Yeah. Uh, but you know what I care about is delivery of the goods, mm -hmm. uh, national security. You know, they're saying Trump. If there's a terror attack, it's his fault. He's not getting a daily briefing. 
Harry Reid said they were going to give him fake CIA briefings. Now they've come out, a bunch of the 17 agencies, including the head agency, and said the, the, the main CIA did not say that Russia hacked. This is all just basically made up by some group of analysts. Well, Harry uh, Reid also uh, claimed that he slipped in the shower when the truth is he got that black eye by getting the crap pit kicked out of him by his brother Larry. I don't know. You can't write that. That's sketch. a sitcom Larry that needs to be. Harry uh, in the shower. Um, I gosh. wouldn't take anything that. that it's, just, it's just a dirt ball. Him and Nancy Pelosi, I think, are, I would put them among the worst of yes. the worst. If I were, had a gun to my head and I had to vote for Hillary, okay, Alex. You, you give it to Larry. You give it to Larry. You, if you, well, I give it to Larry. <laughs> if you have a gun to your head, you have to vote for Nancy Pelosi or Hillary Clinton. You have to. You can't say I wouldn't. You have to. Uh, I don't say Nancy Pelosi. Oh, my God. I was going to say pull the trigger. <laughs> I can't believe you went there. Well, I want to die. Everyone press, no, no. take it. He likes Nancy Pelosi. He'll vote for actually, Nancy. <laughs> actually, no, no, I don't like Nancy Pelosi. I know. I'm kidding. Her daughter is, I'm into Frankenstein with a big wig on. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm into one that looks like Frankenstein. No, no. Did you know she's running around on Fox News just a few days ago saying that she thinks she's getting death threats because of me? But I pointed out she's just honchoing this attempt. You know, as I said earlier, to overthrow uh, the uh, electors for Trump. Yeah. And they're then all over the news saying, censor Alex Jones, shut down the free press. I'm really concerned about this, that they've gotten to this point, uh, again, because they can't beat us. What do you make of this? Well, you know, it's, it, I'm glad, actually, you, gave, you, you eased my pain somewhat when we talked about the YouTube thing, because we've definitely seen some changes. And we're going, well, this, this isn't really what, and it doesn't, it doesn't track with what's happening on the site or other social media. They have noticeably been uh, keeping subscribers from the channels they've chosen, to which they've chosen to subscribe. And that, to me, is, here's the deal, right? There's a difference between the First Amendment and businesses can do whatever they want. What they can't do is court your business, encourage you to use that platform for years, and then decide to switch the game. And that's what they're doing, and they do seem to be exactly, I can't exactly. Do it, selectively targeting more right-wing voices. Exactly. Well, I hear this all the time, that, well, Facebook or, or, or Google or YouTube, its subsidiary, is its own business. But if you hold out that we have this model, here is the playing field, here are the rules. Right. We come there, we are YouTube, we build the content, we win, we succeed, we dominate, and then the left and the corporate group goes, Google, Facebook. In fact, they're actually in the video I talked about earlier, the crucifixion of Alex Jones, saying, Google, YouTube, Facebook, shut down Alex Jones and the rest of the alt-right. That means louder with Crowder dot com. Yeah. And so we now see these algorithms that push you to the pop music, to the liberal channels, to all the atheist channels. Not against the atheists, but it's like everything's force-fed atheists, atheists, atheists. No one <laughs> wants to hear it anymore. <laughs> yeah, and know. so, you know, this is what they're doing is they're trying to divert off into distractions because we literally, uh, you know, broke their back. But listen, even if they're successful censoring us, like Reddit's starting to do and others, it will just mean we move on to other platforms. And so as they censor us, we just see traffic going up to InfoWars because folks go, oh, I can't find it here. I'll just go back to the source. So yeah. it, it's but key it's that still, we have our scary. own platforms. Admit, it's scary because there's always that transition process where you see that dip until they come back and they have to find you, especially when Google is, you know, they're, they're also in charge of Google, right? Most people aren't using Bing. So it, it, it is scary. Listen, I tell people out there, this is why we created the Mug Club, the network, the premium network, because we can't be uh, beholden to them. And by the way, some of the commenters, I, I must have misspoke uh, when you were on, on my show or whatever. I was literally saying, I'm going to rip off your mug. I, uh, great minds think alike, a year ago, I was brought in one, not that big, it was a smaller one, a little bit smaller, I got at Big Ben at their little gift shop, and I said, I want this. I remember going, I want it to say InfoWars and stuff on it, and I you know, wandered off, and then all of a sudden, you've got one, great idea. People should subscribe to pay for the First Amendment to continue on. This war isn't free if you fund us buying our products at InfoWarsStore.com, by going to LouderToCrowder.com, uh, this is how we're going to be able to continue on. We don't have the big corporate sponsorships. We see Breitbart uh, having BMW and Kellogg's pull out from them. We went away from advertising a long time ago because they always start trying to pressure you right. what you say, what you do. I mean, I even had some sponsors uh, during the campaign say, we're going to pull, and I'm not bashing Ted Cruz, we're going to pull if you you know don't start you know supporting Ted Cruz. I had affiliates. Well, we had the same with Trump, honestly, and we of weren't course. we weren't oh, pro course. Trump or anti Trump. But if we were like, oh gosh, I really don't like this three trillion, and people get mad, say, so, well, you better not say that because we need. I'm like, Hold on a second, this is antithetical toward being a conservative, toward being a libertarian. No, no, I agree with you. Some of the Trump folks can really, really get vicious if you uh, 
Start, and the cruise you know, folks. They, they, they were too. They'd get mad if we made fun of him in a sketch. You know, people just have no sense of humor about this anymore. I think everything is fair game or nothing is fair game. Um, yeah. But you're right. It'll be interesting to see how this shakes out. I think you're a big model for people to follow, uh, very successful in what you've done independently. And I'm seeing even leftists trying to copy it. So um, that's a double edged sword. You could be oh, creating yeah, the uh, liberal uh, Frankenstein monster. <laughs> Who's that guy that filed, uh, uh, failed on MSNBC? Uh, Uberman. 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 Yeah. Uh, he came out with a new show called The Resistance. And then, <laughs> of course, I call our show The Resistance. And he goes, oh, we're angry. And we're going to battle them. We're at war with Russia. Ah! And like, but it was totally fake off a teleprompter. Right. So, so, I mean, it is really weird to see the left trying to copy what I do. The truth is, after I've been on air an hour and a half talking about this stuff, I genuinely throw tender tantrums on the ear. I get, you know, well, I get sick of being on. <laughs> that is true. This and is I appreciate it. Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Thanks so much, brother. We'll have to have you back soon. Rex, thank you for watching. We'll be back with someone. Donner, I just came over to congratulate you on the baby bo- Oh, you should be ashamed of yourself, Donner. Who ever heard of a red-nosed reindeer? That's messed up, Senna. That's that's borderline racist. Well, I am Aryan. Yeah, I noticed with the lawsuit last year. Well, who ever heard of a Negro elf? You were supposed to be burying me. That was supposed to be. I, I'm disappointed in your dancing. Not oh, you're Jared. right. Producing with me in video suit as uh. always is Jared, who is not gay, at not gay Jared on Twitter. I fulfill my legal obligations. Draw your own conclusions. Uh, starting in January, not gay Jared and Courtney are going to have their own program on Friday's uh, weekly wrap up. Yeah. Not necessarily political uh, entirely, but you at crtv.com for Mug Club. You should apologize in advance. Yeah. I need to bring up more program there in my ear. And uh, we have a couple things to get to. Sally Cohn, after this break, for people complaining about Alex Jones, you can now bitch about Sally Cohn. <laughs> this is this is the problem we were talking about with Alex Jones with, with social media. Just because you hear someone you disagree with doesn't mean you have to click the dislike button because then it doesn't show up and you never hear anything you disagree with. That's fine if that's how you want to live your life. But then you end up like Martin Sheen. Uh, this happened, and I believe uh, was it, it was Orange County, right? That sounds right. Yep. Yep. Orange County, a student this week recorded their professor. Now, let me set this up. This isn't a professor expressing a political opinion. This isn't a professor saying, hey, I disagree with Donald Trump. I think his policies on trade are bad, or I think his policies on abortion are bad, or I think his policies on taxes are bad. Uh, this is a student who recorded a professor amidst a diatribe. Let's roll the first clip. Our nation is divided. We have been assaulted. It's an act of terrorism. One of the most frightening things for me and most people in my life is that the people committing the assault are among us. Okay. Um, I, this, is what, this is the Gavin thing where he was talking about, the play mm -hmm. it through. What's so scary to you? Yeah. Play it through. How is it an assault on your life? What's so scary to you? Unless, well, if you're George Stephanopoulos' daughter, you might not be able to get free abortions at 14. I can understand that could be harrowing. Mm. Especially for Little Horse. Let's go to the next clip. A supremacist and a vice president that is uh, one of the most anti-gay uh, humans in this uh Ah, white supremacist, anti-gay. And this professor goes on, you can see the video at lotterwithcrowder.com, to simply make the ad hominem attacks, the very personal attacks toward Donald Trump. And this student, who I believe was a college Republican, recorded it, was interviewed, and uh, posted it online. So what do you think the response was, not gay, Jared, from the professor's union? It was probably like a, a lot of like like tolerance mixed yes. in with like... Um, yep. like uh, Understanding. Yeah, I would assume you, one would assume so. Well, yeah. No, they threatened suspension or expulsion for recording. Oh, so that was my second guess. It, what's so I funny? Promise. You know, this professor ha gleefully uses this platform with students, mm -hmm. both willing and unwilling. People who signed up for the course. I had it with Greek mythology. With Greek mythology, I remember I had the teacher Mrs. Holt who said that Christians couldn't pass her course. Mm. 
We're reading about Icarus. <laughs> Jim Henson did this story better with Muppets, and you're telling me that because of my personal faith, I can't pass your course? So this is the problem. This isn't always occurring, let's say, in a class where you sign up for gender studies. This occurs in classrooms all across the country, whether you want to or not. This professor so willingly and, and uh, of course, out of ego, used her platform to try and push propaganda, uh, to try and indoctrinate little, little children, effectively, to try and indoctrinate college students, and instead was recorded. Well, you wanted to use this platform. You want to be the world's most powerful genie and all that comes with it. Instead, they want to use that platform. They want to force kids. It's, it's kind of like when you go to a film or you go to a live performance, let's say Hamilton, and you paid for tickets to watch a play, and instead you have to watch them bitch about your vice presidential candidate. This is the arrogance of the left in Hollywood, in the entertainment industry, or in academia. As Not Gay Jared was pointing out, the complete lack of tolerance. This is what you see. So she chose to use your platform. Student recorded. Professor's Union says, we're going to expel you. We're going to suspend you. I, here's the thing. I don't understand it either. Why is, why? Why would you be upset? I don't understand. If this is a view that's not problematic, what's the issue? The issue isn't maybe that she's ashamed of her views. Mm. The issue is that it wasn't an appropriate form. The issue is that it wasn't the time or the place to try and indoctrinate students. The issue is that you're a sucky teacher and you got caught. That's why you're threatening the student. If you went up and you had a great speech, if you went up and you had a great, uh, a great class, right, and everyone left happy and that were recorded, you'd hit share and like that thing like it's hot on Facebook before Facebook decides to bury it as fake. What you don't like is you got caught doing something you weren't supposed to do. What the left doesn't like is when they claim Congressman Clyburn was called the N-word and then Andrew Breitbart said, I'll give $100,000 to the United Negroes College Fund if anyone can provide evidence. They don't like being caught. They don't like people with their iPhones acting as actual reporting cameras now. They don't like that there's no barrier to entry. They don't like that they can be seen around every corner. They don't like transparency. They need to hide in the shadows. A professor was pushing something about Donald Trump, a white supremacist, as she puts it, which is patently untrue. They're upset because they got caught with their pants down, which really doesn't matter all that much anyway, because you probably have tenure. You can pull your pants down and do whatever you want with your students, and there's nothing they can do about it. Congratulations, you tenure. So uh, we'll be following this. Hopefully we'll get this gentleman on the show. Um, again, this is a free speech issue. If we're talking about positions of hierarchy and oppression, what is a more what is more of an abuse of power? Not being white and disagreeing with a black guy, being a professor who's in charge of the student's grade, who's in charge of the student's life course. The entire path of his life is determined in your hands, should you give him an A or a D. And anyone who doesn't believe that professors allow their politics to intermingle with their grading, well, you're probably dumb enough that you went to university. Speaking of pants down, have you uh, read about this, Kelly Mantle? Oh, Lord. Now, first off, Kelly Mantle is what exactly? Uh, it's just that. And it's, I don't know. It's an actor. Kelly Mantle is an actor. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't quite sure. Actor. I think maybe some music. I don't know. Was, yeah. So I was thinking Kelly Mantle is this catch-all, which, yeah. in a matter of speaking. Um, so Kelly Mantle is a tranny, uh, transgender actor, and has now been nominated in both. Uh, just, um, I hate gender fluid. Gender fluid. It prefers. That's right. That's right. Gender fluid. Shame. Which makes the rest of the story. So much more sensible. <laughs> Gender fluid Kelly Mantle has been nominated in both the male and female Oscar categories. Those, that's all the same person. That's all the same person. For people who are listening terrestrially, we have five pictures up there. One looks like, um, it looks like Justin Bieber fast forward 50 years and behind the music where he's trying to recapture his youth. And the other yeah. looks like Man Bear Pig. And the other looks like the singer from Coldplay, if he were a tranny, which is probably what Kelly Mantle is playing there. This is all kind of like when Burger King started selling hot dogs, then they didn't either very well. <laughs> yes, it's very much like I that. don't, I don't, I'm not jiving. I'm not getting it. Um, yeah. So this is an issue where if you begin to deconstruct it, you can tweet me at S Crowder. Kelly Mantle nominated for both male and female Oscar categories. Let me know. I know you're, I know you're dying to see the clip too. The clip? the clip? Oh, that's right. We do have a Kelly Mantle clip. We are going to lose so many viewers in the live feed. Um, we have to. Go ahead. Ginger, do you like what you do? Oh! Prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> do you like it? I'm sweating. I can't get another job. Why not? Because people don't hire transgenders. 
Correct. First of all, they need a, it's just me or do they need an audio engineer? Yeah. They do. Was that just me? It but, seems like an after-school special, like yes, a student film. Except yeah. you expect Lena Dunham's sister to show up. <laughs> oh, my word. It, it was one of, it's kind of like Bill Burr says about Botox. You can either look your age or you can look scary. You can either look your sex or you can scare small children. You don't get to convert, and this is proof of that. So at what point do we get to say the left is around the bend of parody? Right, remember, we, we did a parody of this. We did a joke about uh, Bruce Jenner going back, and Caitlyn Jenner, going back mm -hmm. and retroactively giving Bruce Jenner the medal uh, for Caitlin. best female triathlete. Yeah. Yeah, giving, giving Bruce Caitlin. Jenner the female. Here's the thing. That's actually it's, what they want to really do confusing. now. It's really confusing. I can't honored, keep track. They honored Caitlyn Jenner for Bruce's accomplishments. This gender-fluid person is nominated for both male and female actress, right? Not musician? Yeah, that's... Well, when you, can, when you can collect both the male and the female privilege, you know yes. you've arrived. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll take, which Oscar, male or female, uh, best, best nominated? I'll take both. What is happening, Hopper? Stop it. He's literally chewing his foot. My dog is chewing his, you can't see him, he's off frame. He, his whole foot was in his mouth like the kid at summer camp who impressed everyone by sticking his fist in there. Hey, Hopper. Now he looks at me, he's mad. Go lay down, buddy. He was chewing his foot, he just gets bored. You know why? He's upset by the, all this transgender business. He is. Because he's fixed and it, it hits a little too close it's to home. It's a little home. too close to home. <laughs> I, you know, and, and here's the deal. I think even a lot of leftists, they want to be tolerant and open-minded and all that gay stuff. And it gets to this point now where they go, all right, okay. It's like, I was with you on the first two. I was, okay, two guys shacking up. That's a marriage. Fine. I don't care. You know what? We'll even, we'll even remove the idea of federalism. We'll only invoke... We'll only invoke it when it's convenient and not even give states the right to determine what marriage licenses look like. We'll go on board with that. All right, transgenders want to pinch a loaf in a, the ladies' bathroom. Fine. All right, that's that. Fine. That's okay. They want to use the airline toilet. Fine. I don't want to use it anyway. Okay, I'll go on board with that. Now they're going, hold on, gender fluid. These people want to be able to do either or at any point depending on what's most convenient for them at the time. Now you're going to have a few people who go... Okay, but you're going to have a lot of people who say, no, no, I'm not going to. You know what? <laughs> I see what you're trying to do, but I'm not going to give it to you. And, and, and the further they go on down the trail, the fewer people are, are, are going, the fewer people are going to see following them. Because they're so far, they don't even have a breadcrumb of trails back. Mm. They have no way to find their way back. Once you jump down this rabbit hole... And you start, people can be male or female depending on any given day, right? We were just trying to work out the, the, the logistics between, okay, what goes on in your driver's license? Okay, you have a penis, you have an enhormone replacement therapy, but you like to dress as a woman. Now, that used to be transvestite, but it's not anymore because gender is separated from sex. All right, let's see how we can determine this. Well, the bathroom, I guess it depends. Do you pee standing up? Okay, and now we're going, oh, hold on a second. Do you have two driver's licenses depending on the day? Uh, what, are you a lesbian? What, what, and then one you have to people get out who are gender and queer one for the other than and pansexual. Mm -hmm. Meaning they can be a man and gay or straight that day, and a woman, lesbian, or straight that day. All I know is that their partners are neither. Um, they have very serious, deeply rooted father issues. I think that's I think that's the key here. Martin Sheen needs a dad. We'll be back. The entire CRTV lineup, including. Oh, 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 please, please help me. I, I, I'm, I'm not gay. Jared on the shelf. I only came to offer the Mug Club, giving you access to all of Lateral Crowder daily programming. Only $99, 69 for students and veterans. But then, unspeakable things happened to me. You, have, you, you can change this. You have the power to change this. Help, help me, help me, please help me, please. No, no, don't go, don't go, don't go. Please, 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 please,
world. New track, Pogo, for those who don't know who he is. Pogo, very stuff. talented guy. That was actually him singing, I think, with a filter. So it wasn't taken from a, 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 a film. He's doing some more original stuff, doing I'm Doing some more original stuff. Yeah. Why did the United States have to ban him? All those know. work visa issues. It's wrong. I blame the Mexicans and I transgenders. Do too. Hey, uh, no, I blame this Muslim student we're about to talk about. So this Muslim student, this story, remember the story of the Muslim student who claimed that she, uh, in the New York subway, was kicked they tried mm -hmm. to remove her hijab, yeah. called her Three a terrorist. Three racist guys coming. Racist guys. Classic story. Now, the Classic. story was front page everywhere. Headline. Take a guess the voting proclivity of the men in question. I, well, that, I'm going to say libertarian, maybe Green Party. You would think. maybe. Yeah, maybe they went to yeah. Jill Stein. Yeah. They, were, they were upset about the recount, so they decided to go beat up a Muslim, and the media ran with that. Yeah. Um, you'd be incorrect. Donald Trump. Ooh, Donald, Donald Trump. So this Muslim student said, by the way, I love what we're talking about fake news, right? Because anyone who, you remember this was everywhere, right? Yeah. Everyone remembers this was absolutely everywhere. The news media ran with it. There was no vetting. There was no due diligence. Just, well, she, said some, she said some Trump guys kicked her and she's Muslim. Let's run with this. New York Times, Daily, take your pick. Um, well, turns out the detectives involved, the people investigating this, saw some inconsistencies. And it turns out that um, she made it all up. She claims it's because she had family issues. So she made all of this up. None of this ever happened, but the damage is already done out in the media. Now, kind of like this happened when, when was it, uh, Huffington Post claimed that I yelled the N-word at CPAC. I know, I'm getting personal here. They claim Steven Crowder yells N-word to applause at CPAC. Well, that never happened. I was doing a rap and I was dressed as Thomas Jefferson, I said knickers. Now, if you don't think the, the, the joke about knickers when I was wearing knickers was funny, fine. I get it. But to say that I yelled the N-word is both wrong and dishonest. So what they did was they put that out there. That was front page at HuffPo. And then the retraction when they admitted that they were wrong was buried in the blog on the politics section that no one reads because people only read the clickbait from HuffPo. So that, that's the sleight of hand that occurs. What occurs is everyone reads about, oh my gosh, look at all this violence occurring. Now they try and, because Black Lives Matter, let's ignore everything that's going on there, right? Every day, all day, every day, Black Lives Matter beating up white people. All day, every day, every day. I don't know, hanging white people, I'm sure it's happened. I don't know if people still use the news. Seems there could be more hmm. efficient methods. There's probably an app for it, but pulling people out of cars, violent protests, destroying cities, burning down Walgreens on their own. Well, let's talk, not, not most of these people, most of these people are peaceful. And now we have this one story that this was a gold mine. The left said, finally, we got one. Poor young Muslim woman. Wait, hold on, they tried to pull off her hijab? Oh my God, that's anti-Muslim and it's anti-woman, right? That's perfect, because we have the whole Hillary Clinton angle and vagina, I get it. Oh my gosh, they were Trump voters. This is perfect, this is right in our lap. Well, should we, hold on a second, shouldn't we vet this? No, 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 Let, let's run with it, front page. Go, 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 go. Well, now it turns out none of it's true. And we're talking about fake news? This has been going on for decades. People thought Walter Cronkite was an actual journalist at one point, or Brian Williams, Barbara Walters. So it's just funny to me that all of a sudden we're concerned about fake news. Anyway, that's just an update. There's not much more than that other than it's entirely fake. I don't know if we have anything else we want to talk about Surprise. there. Surprise. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Surprise. And I do think this is... <laughs> I don't know when Ramadan is, but I bet you she doesn't even celebrate it. I wouldn't even be surprised if she's not she really She went Muslim. there. I checked. She put on a hijab for a photo op. I always get suspicious when they're wearing a hijab and full-on evening makeup. <laughs> when they're wearing the hijab, it's but the It's the stilettos rests, that yes. like, stick below the dress. I'm wearing the hijab, but the it rest looks off. like Kelly Mantle in a Hallmark film. <laughs> Eric Roberts makes an appearance. He always does. Um, this shows us, and this is one thing that I do think, we'll talk with this, uh, about this with Sally Cohn. I disagree with her on nearly everything, but I appreciate her, her gameness, willing to stand in here and trade. Um, the left, I think, has, and this is a real turning point, we've, we've talked about kind of, you know, the overreach and the pendulum swinging, but I do think if we go macro, the left has really exposed themselves to the masses, meaning people who aren't even necessarily politically engaged, uh, to be the bigots here. Uh, not Gay Jerry was talking about with, with his friend who he thought really couldn't stand this program. Um, and now he found out was, was a fan yeah, and watches it and pays attention. And this is not a guy who's, you know, super politically engaged. I mean, it happens as people get older, but I think the masses, even the people who are consuming the People magazine, the Us Weekly, the, the, the Kardashian 
fluff, Pop-Tarts crap, a lot of them are going, gosh, the left is really not as welcoming and tolerant as so I he thought He found that out, and he found he had called a white supremacist one too many times, and he's, in, he's in, on, on academic track, track getting his Did doctorate right now. he say he was right called now. a white supremacist? Oh, yeah. Supremacist? Yeah, yeah because he, he disagreed, and another guy, his, another fellow friend, uh, his views on marriage, because a guy came out of the closet after school, and... Um, and then, then it's just downhill from there. The academic world, I think, actually, because it's so far left, is actually pushing him yeah. the other way a little bit. Well, so. that's what Alex Jones was talking about with his yeah. son. We never had kids that age who watched us or listened to us. Mm -hmm. I certainly did not in 2009. They were all enamored with Barack Obama. That was the counterculture. Yep. So you have this combination of the counterculture, right? Because now Republicans are, are, are conservatives, libertarians, whatever you want to call them. They're the counterculture. And then you have the left who have really showcased them to be honest to God bigots. And I don't throw that term around flippantly. But if you hear a story and you believe with no factual evidence that people kicked a Muslim down a flight of stairs like a Lifetime movie and tried to tear off her hijab and called her terrorist and it was because they voted Donald Trump and you run that on your front page, you're kind of a bigot. Right? The definition of bigotry. You're, you already have a preconceived notion of people who disagree with you. If someone who simply is concerned about the economy or maybe concerned about jobs that their family members are losing or maybe concerned about political corruption in Washington doesn't vote the way you want them to vote, you call them a white supremacist. Does that mean that maybe you have a preconceived notion of these people who disagree with you? Maybe someone who has daughters. Maybe someone who isn't on board with the whole gender fluidity and Oscar nominations for he, she, Z, or other identification of the day has a different opinion than you. And they don't want their daughter taking a dump next to you at the Nordstrom stall. You call them a transphobe. Well, doesn't that mean you have a preconceived notion of someone who has a different opinion uh, from you on this issue? Really, let's talk. Let's categorize it. Conservatives. Any, really, it's not even conservative anymore. It's anyone who's not far left. I mean, that's how we have people like Dave Rubin. Mm -hmm. That's how we have people like Sargon of Akkad. You have people like Milo. It, it's not even just the left anymore. It's not the conservative move. It's everyone who's not this hyper-progressive left. And the bizarre thing is that they're in these positions of authority in the media, in the entertainment industry, in academia, and they're so concerned of seeing this come crashing down because it's happening at once. That's what's so crazy. You want to talk power structures. Who has more control in this country than the left? We'll ask Sally Cohn after this break. Stay tuned or you're racist. Now, all right, boys, it's time to try and learn to fly. Who's willing to step up? I'll give it a try, Mr. Coach. Okay, boy, that's good. Now try and get your flight underneath you. And it... Oh, wow. Great first start. Look at him go. I'm flying. I'm flying. Yippee! Now, great job, son. What's your name? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's hideous. Let's not let this young man join in any reindeer games. Oh, my stupid nose ruins everything. I don't mind your nose, real. I think it's cute. I'm cute? She thinks it's cute? She thinks I'm cute! I'm cute! Real quick, do you consent to what's about to be forthcoming? guest she has been on the show before be nice with her uh because we disagree on nearly everything but she's always been pretty civil she's always been kind to me i would hope she'd say the same at sally cone k-o-h-n for you gentiles sally <laughs> <laughs> speaking of gentiles that's a very yeah. gentilian tree yeah i know i wish you could see all of it but uh yeah i'm very i, I thank you uh, it's a big tree uh i listen i was one of those uh jewish kids who grew up and just wanted a Christmas tree. That's and all my Jewish can, friends. They all have Christmas that. trees. Well, that's right. I mean, you can deconstruct that till the cows come home, but uh, I did. And uh, <laughs> the truth is, when I, I talked my dad into letting me not get bat mitzvahed, uh, his condition was, okay, but no Christmas tree. Because uh, he knew what was coming next. So then, I, 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 like, as a kid, I would take an umbrella and put it up in my bedroom and, and decorate it with lights. Wow. You know what's funny? Is oh, as a no, kid, I, really I jumped off the second story with an umbrella because I saw Mary Poppins and I thought it would work as a parachute. 
So umbrellas seemed it seems to be a you know common what? theme in problems that for children. That tells me a lot. I was five. <laughs> Uh, okay, that makes me feel better. <laughs> I pretty much knew it wasn't going. It wasn't as bad as my brother, who didn't have an umbrella, and I wouldn't give him mine. So he took a, a grocery plastic bag and jumped and thought that would be a parachute. I would think that would work better. You would think it would work better, but little fact it doesn't. So uh, oh, that's don't that's consider it. Break bad. anything? <laughs> no, no, no. I was well, in fact, it does not. It was snow. We jumped into the snow. We would always. Oh, jump into the oh, snow oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh. Okay, all right. I wasn't right, that. Right. I was like second story. Come on. All right. Sorry. Did you want to talk about something? No, we can talk about. But I was going to say Gary Goldman has a hilarious bit about that. He, he talks. He's like, oh, Christians. You know, you you knocked it out of the park with Christmas. That's a fantastic holiday with Christmas. Uh, you have the Santa and the tree. I also understand there's some sort of religious component to this, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a jab, and uh, I'll take it. I'll give him that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you're on, right. so we have to make this uh, angry and bombastic. No. So you have been on recently I'm tired seeing... tired of being angry and bombastic. Well, that, but this okay. is one thing. The, the meltdown... You know, I wasn't a big Trump supporter, obviously, in the primaries, but I will say this. I have gone further the other way just because of the behavior from the left and the meltdowns that are just completely uh, off, off the beam at this point. Do you feel that way with... with your fellow sort of progressives that they've gone too far? I mean, demanding counseling and this guy needs to be uh, run out before he's brought in as president. I mean, they, they really, really are, are like a kid being put to bed throwing a tantrum. Well, as a general rule, the left does do melodrama better. That's why we own <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, wait, when you in say fairness. we, do you mean... The Jews. I know, I know, I know. Don't go there. Don't go there. I know in this alt right universe, it's okay to oh, make it you know comments, right. but I hold you higher, Stephen. I know. Uh, what do I think about that? Here's the thing I will say this on the right, y'all are brilliant at finding those like crazy pathological extremes and trying to paint the entirety of, uh, you know, one side or one group with them. Uh, I, I, for the record, live as an openly leftist person uh, in a openly leftist community uh, called Brooklyn, New York, yes. and uh, have not encountered a single person uh, sobbing on the streets, wailing uh, on the subway, rocking back and forth, demanding therapy. I've seen some people with free hug well, signs. Hold on a That's second. comforting. I would counter with that with when was the last time you went into a tapas bar? Because <laughs> you will find them. You just need to know where to look. But no, you do say some extremes, and I agree. Right. Uh, but I would say, like, the entirety of Black Lives Matter. Did you matter. say topless or topless? Because topless. it really affects... Topless. Okay, because it affects whether my laugh, how, you know, which yes, laugh yes, I get for that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. whether you're allowed right. to laugh right. because, you know... You're, Damn you're it, Stephen! Why topless. do I like you so I much? Know. I don't even like myself. That's the odd thing here. Oh, um, now, oh, now who needs therapy? Yeah, well, well, like Jill Stein. You, were, you, were, you wrote about this, and you thought Jill the Stein recount deal was a great therapy. idea. Well, That's to me... Good. So many leftists got behind that. That is an absurd idea. If the right did it, you know, Hillary Clinton was vilifying Trump for not accepting the results. It didn't do anything except line her pockets. It seems like leftists want it both ways, and they don't accept the results when it doesn't go in their favor, whether it's Walter Scott, okay. Jill Stein. Well, all right. Well, okay. First things first, let's be fair. It was Donald Trump who said that he will accept the results of the election if he wins. So I would like to, I would like to posit that there is a good deal of self-serving hypocrisy on both sides of the political aisle. Now, if you want to have a debate about which side does it more, I, I suppose that's an interesting conversation, not one I'm terribly interested in. I will say that I think, I, I, I hope, that if we could all step back for a second from our partisan blinders, uh, the idea that Russia played any role in influencing the outcome of our elections and the potential, potential, that there might have been any hacking, any nefarious infiltration of our electoral system, I would hope, I would hope we all want to know if that happened, no matter I would who I would won. agree with that. But I would also say in that same breath that uh, if we agree on that, I Hillary... I need more breath, but okay. So, well, I apologize. Um, uh, that's because I'm, I leave you breathless, Miss Cohn. I, I, <laughs> I am the conversion I therapy. This is the well, truth. Well Mike Pence just needs to put me on hire. <laughs> I will say this, uh, by that, in that theme, Hillary Clinton should have yeah. been disqualified to run because there's no, is there, the foreign donations, the acquiescence to, uh, to countries that do not have the United States' best interest at heart. Again, we can't have it both ways. I don't think she should have ever, ever been eligible on those grounds to run because they deliber deliberately tried to affect an election in favor of Hillary. So, okay, that's interesting. We could totally talk about that, but that means you didn't answer my question. Which no, is, I did. I said absolutely. You, I mean, if, if the Russians okay, are so involved in hacking, I have a problem. So but then, you didn't then, then there you go. So then you want to have, then you want to count the votes. You want to make, you want to be clear. Look, there were some irregularities. 
some, uh, you know, people who study electoral systems who are way smarter than I am and better at math looked at these irregularities and said, hey, look, this is problematic. And we have, listen, this is a simple one. You got voting machines that don't produce a paper trail. That's moronic. Yeah. That's just stupid. So first of all, we shouldn't have those. Beyond that, we have them. And so we should actually it's just make sense. When you see mathematical irregularities, statistical irregularities, you'll want to look at them and know if something happened. By the way, everyone involved yeah. says it's not going to change the outcome those, of the election. Right. It's just to know that it's working. Well, and the good thing is those irregularities show Trump had in the more future. votes, not fewer. So I mean, thank you, Whatever Jill it is, we just want to, we just want to. Ah, come on, just want to. That's the I'm Jesse sorry. Ventura thing. I'm just asking questions with no answer. And he's, we just want to make it fair. We just, no, no, I'm it's a tantrum. But it's I would like to argue that pointing out anything absurd in the context of a Trump presidency strikes me as a little uh, ironic. I, I think mean, this whole election has been silly, but I do think the left needs to just we are, accept the four results. Years he's silliness. the president. He won. I, Jill I Stein's an anyone, idiot. Listen, I go on air every night and talk about our president-elect Donald Trump. I don't like it, but I accept it. What, do you, what more do you want? Okay, no, there that's you go. good. Now, I'm not worried at this point about Hillary and her baggage. Let's talk about Trump and his baggage. Let's talk about the fact that he said he was going to put his two sons in charge of his business, and he was going to not be involved in running his businesses. He was going to be involved in running the country and create this little firewall and delayed his press conference, which was supposed to be today, to announce that. Because lo and behold, his two sons, who are supposed to be looking after his business interests only, have been involved in his transition and vetting cabinet members and at meetings with tech giants. And now, I, you know, we can talk about Hillary's past and present. You know, and I haven't talked about Hillary's past and present. I didn't bring up Hillary. Hillary. I was just but, talking I mean, about her now, running against Trump president. when we were talking no, about is, him being yeah, yeah. eligible because of Russia. That's what but I was no, saying. But I'm saying we're now, this is now our president elect who is not disentangling himself from his business interests and making it look every day like he is first and foremost out for his bottom line and then maybe if he gets around to it so what American. if it were non-profit interests it's not no, but what right it, so in no, other no, words, no, 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 here's my point here's my point would it make he, it acceptable for example when presidents like barack obama helped raise funds for non-profits or show up to charity dinners because that to me there's direct government wait, collusion we're talking about a, 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 a tax you exemption. realize anyway. that they don't Profit. I mean, in other words, they don't make money. You realize that the point of those charitable yeah. enterprises is to like right. feed starving children. That's the point. No. So and and that's what the brochure says. That's what the brochure says. But uh, you know, when you have organizations where less than one percent does it, no, I understand what you're talking about. But my point is, again, this is the selective outrage of Donald Trump being a business person and him having other interests, him not being nope. only a president. Well, that wasn't Barack nope. Obama. That wasn't George. B. It's the same playbook, Sally. Halliburton, Dick Cheney. Now it's Trump steaks, Trump wine. It just gets yeah, to be silly. Halliburton, Dick Cheney. He at least had the decency to try and hide who he was meeting with to influence energy well, policy. But that. we didn't you know. Then. So no, but like, instead of Trump, you can just put the head of the oil company in charge of our foreign policy. Look, I don't know if people realize this, but when Rex, when Rex Tillerson and his role at Exxon went, first of all, let's for a second just note that he that Exxon has billions of dollars in deals that are pending in Russia. If only we were to lift the sanctions that I think everyone agrees we should have imposed on Russia because of its incursion in Ukraine. But and Tillerson still holds stock. Even, even if he leaves his position, he still holds stock. He will benefit financially, depending on U.S. foreign policy, which he will have a direct role in. Yep. Tillerson, when he was at Exxon, the United States, the State Department, had come up with a deal to spread oil profits in Iraq to the different regions and factions that would help bring unity to the obviously destroyed and, and dysfunctional Iraq. Yeah. And Tillerson went behind the State Department's back and went against American foreign policy interests and cut a deal just with the Kurds between Exxon to profit Exxon and to hurt American foreign policy interests. This is the guy who we're now going to put in charge of the State Department. So yeah, well, this is okay, about so nonprofits. Me, this is about no, no, using I, I, I American think, policy I like the idea that for some people who've business made a little, profit. I like the idea that some people who've made a little money can actually be involved in government. I like the idea that it's not everybody who's been a community organizer and working for a nonprofit where we say they don't make profit, but they make a half a million dollar salary a year. Whether it's Barack Obama, whether it's Michelle Obama, whether it's someone who works for one of these conservative nonprofits who then becomes an advisor. I'm tired of it. Let's try it a different way. There are a lot of things I don't like about Donald Trump, but having some business experience 
Philippines, isn't one of them. And again, the playbook, we go back to oil money, Iraq, Syria is a big thing now again, although they've ignored it since the Syria, what we're talking about with Syria started in 2011. Now we're trying to lay that at Donald Trump's feet. And does Gary Johnson know about Aleppo? It just seems to be so silly and contrived. Then we get to the Standing Rock, Dakota Pipeline. Sorry, Everything wait a is second. Is some big conspiracy with oil money. And do we really think that this person is colluding with someone like Carly Fiorina, who might be appointed, who couldn't possibly be tougher on Russia? Everyone, I think your panels included at CNN that I watched, were out of their mind when she gave the answer on Putin and said she wouldn't take a call with him and how many troops she would add. It's a pretty diverse group. I don't like all I don't. of them, but it's diverse. Okay, but wait a second. You, you, uh, that was a, a very impressive word salad, Stephen. So two thumbs up on that. Uh, but... Let's go back to talking about saying, big oil. But saying big oil salad. that we should have, let's be clear, the, the, the reason we have a constitution, go back and read the Federalist Papers, our founding fathers were concerned about corruption. They were concerned about the corrupting influence what? of power. They wanted, that's why we have three branches of government, that's why we have checks and balances, right? So this isn't about, at all, having a business person as president, having business people in our government. We've, we've no, had it's about finding business. any reason no, it, to shut down someone you don't like through character assassination. And that's what happens. It's, it's always it's some secret motive. I'm sorry, but like, wait a second, hang on. It's literally saying that he should have firewalls so that the American people can be comfortable and confident that he is looking out for our best interest and not the best interest of Trump industries. Well, here, are are, you, are you comfortable Why do you with the that, inverse Sally, of let that? Me that point, he, let me hit that point. So you just made a point. And I, uh, oh gosh, we're already, we have to go into another segment. Why do you think there is, let's assume that you're correct, okay, let's go here. Why do you think it is that so many Americans disagree with you, even Democrats who feel that Donald Trump has their best interest at heart, certainly more than the DNC? Because you haven't uh, communicated that effectively. What you said sounds very elitist. That I want to make sure he's doing as president what's in the American people's best interest and because not. They don't believe I wanna, that. They think I he knows make sure it better he's than not, you and I wanna, leftists. Wait a second. So by saying I want to make sure he's doing what's right for the American people and not benefiting Wall Street and corporate elites, I'm being elitist. He was he's voted just, in just, because people was, don't want him. Bene- people are yes, tired and of now Wall he has a lower approval rating. And the, his, and the Clintons. He has a lower approval rating in his transition than. Barack Obama did at this point in his transition. Oh, so yeah, you have a writer I, for he, Vanity Fair today called, attacking him over his restaurant it, in the plaza. It's just silly. A, we'll be right back. Hold, uh, hold, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Come down and stare at the Christmas tree. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, I'm such a misfit. I'm just going to run away. Ow, careful where you're going now, mister. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there, Mr. Elf. I'm no elf. I'm going to be a dentist. A what? Can I see your molars and poke around back there? No, of course not. Mm. Carl will never let me do that either. It was a big point of contention. Who's Carl? That's not important right now. Let's run away together and sing show tunes. I am not such a misfit. Join the my club, don't be a wimp. Join the my club, don't be a wimp. Join the my club, don't be a bitch. Join the my club, don't be a wimp. Join the my club, don't be a wimp. Join the my club, don't be a wimp. Join the my club, don't be a bitch. Join the my club, don't be a wimp. You better join the mud club unless you want us to kill your children right now. How much do you really love your children? How much do you really love your children? Join the my club, don't kill your kids. Join the my club, we'll kill your kids. Join the mud club, don't kill your kids. Join the mud club, we'll kill your kids. And I don't want nobody. Want nobody. And I don't want nobody. You got that right. And I don't want nobody. I lost. Want nobody. Want nobody. You got that right. And I don't want nobody. It's so massive and convenient. Lottocutter.com slash mug club. At Sally Cohn. K O H N. Got to get the plugs in there. Okay, listen. Well, we could go. Back. I'm also large and convenient, but. Yeah, well, it's, this, is, this is true. Um, here, here's, here's my point, Sally. 
It oh, really does, it. and this is, what was it? I don't care, is that what you said? No, I was, said I want to hear it! Uh, I said I don't care, I was like, my! Or, this is how um, rumors Invoking the Federalist Papers, like you just said, listen, come on, of course you know they've read the Federalist Papers, if you, if, well, maybe you haven't seen any of my videos or this show, uh, I'm a tried and true Federalist, that was, there, those were my issues with Donald Trump. But it really does, and this is the perception, I mean, if you talk about the disapproval rating of Donald Trump, I agree. I agree, a lot of people are polarized right now, but the only group of people, I wouldn't say the only group of people because he's not that hated, people who are hated more absolutely are the progressive left today with the safe spaces, the stifling of free speech, the constant freaking out. Let's say, you know, Standing Rock, I know you've talked about a lot, Dakota Pipeline, Walter Scott was a big one, I know these are issues that you've talked about quite a bit. We can talk about colleges and YouTube. There is a consistent pattern right now where if the left loses, they throw fits, they accuse racism, uh, they accuse Zenith, whatever the phobia is that day, and um, they try and shut down voices. And you see that everywhere. So you were talking about Exxon. Well, that's a good example. But if you go back, yeah, but they did the same thing with everyone else. Talk about big oil money. Yeah, they're doing the same thing with the Dakota Pipeline, which we know will employ Americans and make energy more affordable, make it more efficient. It's safer. It's cleaner. And leftists oppose it no matter what. So people are saying, all right, fine, I guess I'm a racist. All right, fine, I guess I'm a climate denier because I want to use our own energy. Do you see that rebound? And do you think people in your position could maybe stand to learn a little bit through uh, changing their communication if of course their values but at least the communication because people just aren't hearing it now well um, uh, uh, that's interesting because the majority of americans including republicans believe in climate change and believe that we need green energy policy that creates better by the way better jobs and more affordable energy and protects the planet. planet. Great. That's that's the majority Freaking of great. Americans, clear, including the majority. The majority, America. the majority of Americans, including the majority of Republicans, support immigration reform, including a path to citizenship. The majority of Americans, including the majority of Republicans, support common sense gun reform. In fact, eighty-seven percent of oh NRA saying, members. Now I have to go back so and fact check so what, I know that's patently false. Communicating that's, wrong. Well, that's not. So what are we that's communicating not true. That's badly? Not true. That if the American untrue. people, well. What you I mean, just said is completely untrue. Well, the this is an interesting, this is an interesting point. It is. 87%. Okay, let me rephrase. 87% of NRA members, 87%, if I'm remembering correctly, of NRA members support fixing background check loopholes. No. That is true. If that there is, were background check loopholes, uh, that is there true. are no background check loopholes. Yeah, there is, is no internet and, loophole. So here's the thing. You take something that's false. If you ask and, people, do you support background checks? 87% will say, no, oh, yeah. And then if you tell those people, by the way, all guns sold in the United States legally require background checks, they go, oh, problem not true. Solved. Gun show Let's loophole. That's not, that's not, that's not, okay. I'm not gonna, that's actually, that's just not true. But this is an interesting problem in our lives, which you and I exist in is the, the uh, decreasing Venn diagrams of overlapping accuracy and fact. Right? I don't know no, how to get around that one because untrue. that's I was disturbing. I will give you the first two, but and here's I mean, the first, I, hold on, let me, let me, and then I'll let you, you go here. But here's why it's important because you, you threw out three facts. I let you do the first two, uh, which is not, well, there's an issue. But then the last one was so untrue, and this is what most people will do. They'll go, well, hold on a second. Now I have to think that the first two were complete BS because I know the last one to be untrue. But this is interesting because, see, I, if I'm, again, I'm not mistaken, I believe Pew conducted that research. and. The same Pew polls that I know, for instance, you'll cite vis-a-vis -vis in our last conversation about uh, Muslim beliefs around the world, you'll give credit to those polls from Pew, but not the gun control poll why? from Pew. So, please. Okay. I think the question, do you believe, non, uh, do you believe people who convert from Islam deserve to die? Yes, is pretty clear. I think, do you support common sense gun reform or something like an assault weapons ban? It's not which isn't spread. determined, isn't defined. It's not the same kind of accurate polling, and it's not conducted by really real polling agencies because it's it's, it's not a question that same, you can ask. It's the same poll agency, and that wasn't the phrasing of the question. But hey, let's okay, let's pull it up checks. and let's debate it next checks. time. The point is, let's debate it next time. My larger point, though, going back, is but the American untrue. people. I got to leave in a second, so let 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 let's hash this out. The larger <laughs> point is to. the American people. We can pick three other issues. They want to raise the minimum wage. They want let's paid family leave. Issues. They but they do. They support these policies. So. Actually, the American people are, and including, by the way, a majority of conservatives and a majority of independents no. are on. No, it's just no. Okay. A majority of conservatives do not support. What, see, here's the thing: you say, do you they think do. minimum wage? Do you think minimum wage being higher would be a good thing? Yes. Do you support a living wage? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I suppose so. Then do, do you, you support do you believe the to put a cheddar slice on a fillet of fish? Wage. Well, shit, no. That's what happens. The. I, 
Sorry, Jared, you're gonna have to have that dump button. I, I, I don't even, I do not. So <laughs> Listen, you man. It matters, and you can't just say I, living I, wage without course, defining it. Do most conservatives support $15 matter. an hour minimum wage? But, no, that's okay, not true. All right, so, uh, of course, but when people, look, most conservatives don't want to raise the minimum wage, period. So if you're asking the American public, you do you think the government should raise the minimum wage? You just said a majority they, of conservatives Republicans have been blocking, Republicans have been blocking any increase in the minimum wage. So the fact that the Republicans in Washington, so the fact that Republicans, we can parse over however the question was raised, let's go back, let's dig out the data. My point is, you're saying, your larger point here is that Democrats and liberals are losing the American people. We're not, we're not communicating correctly. And my point is on policy after policy after policy, the people are with us. Now, do we do a good job of translating well, no, that? No, hold on a second. I, I'm going to have to stop you. Having that's not candidates true, who can They're articulate not there with positions? you on guns. They're not there with you on, on Islamic terrorism. They're not there with you on free speech. They, they are. And by the way, you want to talk about free speech? Let's talk about the professor in California who gave an anti-Trump rant and received thousands of, of hateful emails and death threats to the point where she's fled the state and gone into hiding. That same Look, incident where the professor's support, union threatened to expel I the kid for recording an anti-Trump propagandist free, rant? Yeah. And you want to equate expelling with death threats? I support free speech. Yes, free speech I do. Free because speech because for some everyone. ass on Twitter sending a death threat is not the same as the authoritative position of a professor's union threatening to expel a kid for doing nothing wrong. Free speech is free speech. I support the right of the teacher to say what they said. I support the right of the conservative students who are out there protesting, saying she should be fired. That's free speech. We should all support all free speech, as opposed to just, I think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's attacking free speech when you come against the people who say things I don't like. Well, hold on but, a second. We'll do, I right? have to go really quickly, but we'll do a quick web extended. You have to. We have to do web extended. Because dude, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. At oh. Sally Cohn, K-O-H-N, louderwithclatter.com. She's going to do a web extended. Otherwise, <laughs> Oh boy, Hobo the Elf, it's the abominable snowman. We better hide. Yes, we better find a place to cuddle. What? Never mind, let's get out of here. Now hop on board my sleigh, boys. I'll get you out of here. Go! Nothing. All right, live read time. Uh, you don't hear these too often, only for a couple of sponsors ever, but uh, we launched the Mug Club, partnered up with CRTV here this month. Uh, thanks so much for people who've supported it. Those who've ordered the mugs, they're on their way, especially if you ordered before December. But for people who haven't, listen, we're going to put content out for free always on YouTube, on uh, lotterwithcredit.com. That doesn't change. If you can't afford the, uh, the 585 a month for the Mug Club, you need to save up, that's fine. This ad isn't for you. But um, listen, we've talked about this with the changes in Facebook, now getting rid of fake news, namely targeting conservatives. We've talked about this with YouTube changing their algorithms to the subscription feed, to the recommended feed. The only way we stay afloat, and we just hired, we've just hired several new people. Uh, we have Edward here. We have my brother Jordan filling in. We're making new hires in the website. There'll be a new golden ticket competition soon for writers. And to pay them fair wages, more than a living wage, more than $15 an hour, is uh, with your support. Mug Club, $99 annually, $69 for students vets or military use the promo code veterans students uh, student or military and uh, you get access to the show daily you'll still get the weekly show for free and all of crtv's lineup michelle malkin mark stein mark levin and uh you help support all the people here who have worked tirelessly from the silly neon sign to creating this studio to fixing the audio issues forthcoming as we go in with skype you've got jared aaron Casey, Brodigan, Courtney, Francine, uh, soon to be Edward and more. And uh, listen, we appreciate it. Again, if you if you can't afford it, you don't want to watch the Daily Show, it's, that's fine. This is not for you. Bookmark lottowithcredit.com. Subscribe on iTunes or YouTube. And uh, we'll make sure none of that changes. We'll be giving you more free content. But um, the response has been great, and we can do a whole lot more. And the more of you, uh, the more of you join. Also, I'm going to get waterboarded this next week just to create subscribers. So that's that's how much we want it. We are Santa's elves. We are Santa's elves. Oh, mama, how can I eat with all that racket? Eat, Santa. They're singing for you. Oh, those elves won't ever shut the hell up. Santa, the language in front of the elves. Oh, shut up, you old ungrateful bitch. You never loved me anyway. Santa 
say my shoulders got the best of me in that dance. I didn't expect mm. them to come out. Uh, we, need to get a, we need to get a floor monitor here so I can hear more of that bass. I'm we do. Stupid crap. Anyway, we are music. going to disconnect from Facebook now. Oh, we're going to so, disconnect from Facebook right from now. Facebook. Head on over to the YouTube, YouTube feed. We appreciate it. Third hour, not gay, Jerry. We have Cassie J coming up after the break uh, of a Red Pill documentary fame. What was it, Jordan, you were saying? Vice? Or was it Australia said it was misogynistic? Yeah, they tried, they tried to keep it out of the country. They had a petition signed to uh, keep the movie out of there. Ah, uh, no. like Germany with Mein Kampf. This never happened. <laughs> we were too busy making strudel and later in Germany. Uh, Germany, you've lost your right to complain about global issues for a little while now. I know it's not fair. I know many of you generationally had nothing to do with it. But when under your belt you have um, all the world wars, we're not going to you for advice. You're not our wise counsel mm. at this stage in the game. Uh, that seems fair. That seems fair. Speaking of countries that are silly, Canada. Have you read this? Have you heard about this? I have. Okay. This lit me up today. Let me make sure I get this correct, because I don't want to get the name wrong. Kelly Leitch. Litch? Someone can correct me. But they're Canadian, so they'll do so politely. Uh, Canadian Minister of Women doesn't want women to be allowed to have mace or pepper spray. She said it would give women a greater measure of protection against would-be attackers. But then... Oh, wait, sorry, 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 hold on a second. So I'm, I'm sorry, I messed this up. Let me correct this. See, we correct things when we get it wrong. She was the, I got the two women mixed up because I'm sexist and all women look alike. It was Patty Haju, hard names from Canada, who opposed Kelly Leitch. Let it, I don't know how to say it. This is a hard segment. <laughs> um, Words are hard, Stephen. Patty, good old Patty, being the saucy minx that she is, she was the one who met this. In other words, a woman trying to allow women to protect themselves with pepper spray and mace. She met it with this comment. Her misguided approach places the onus on women to defend themselves rather than going and focusing and addressing and preventing gender-based violence. Okay. Um, I understand in spirit we're... I understand in spirit where you're coming from here, it's bad for men to attack women, right? I get it, right? Some guy just, you, it, it's every Lifetime movie, they push a pregnant broad down a flight of stairs. What was that? Oh, unplug my computer? Oh, that's right, we're getting these stupid audio issues. My MacBook, when I have it plugged in, it gives you all this dumb hissing. It By the does. way, we fixed the audio issues. The issue is that Sally Cohn has so much treble in her voice in my bass, so it maybe messed up your speakers earlier. I apologize about that. So, I understand in spirit, rather then focus on women and giving them uh, you know, the ability to defend themselves. Why don't we focus on, on raising better men? Why don't we focus on uh, encouraging young men not to attack women? I agree with that. I do think that you should um, hopefully you have laws against rape. One would hope. Hopefully you have laws against assaulting women. However, if you do, and women find themselves on the wrong side of those laws being broken, what do you do? This is the silliness from the left. This is the kind of thing we'll talk about with Cassie J, I hope. This is the, the kind of issue that pushes people in the other direction. We're talking about this tonight, this overreach. I know we're going to the holidays, so there's not a lot of politics. We're getting into culture more. Why don't we focus on preventing gender-based violence? Okay, but that doesn't help the woman in the car who's being assaulted or raped. A weapon does. Now, forget about guns. Forget about firearms, because Canada's so far down the trail, they've already agreed that, well, no, women shouldn't have the right to defend themselves with guns. Now, in the States, right, well, why don't you use mace or pepper spray or a taser? Well, this shows you, let's fast forward a couple decades. If the left gets that, then they want to do away with mace and pepper spray, because that's also too mean. Then they want to do away with knives. Then they want to do away with fighting back altogether, and you're just Cologne, Germany. We're happy New Year, rape. Every New Year gift, every New Year's kiss uh, in Germany comes with rape. I don't know if you knew that. That's that's a terrible. It's slogan. kind of a package deal. That's, that doesn't make for good. As someone at gives all. you their package deal, I wouldn't even argue that mace or pepper spray is the most effective weapon at all. I mean, even even ruling out guns, I'll complete it's night. But that's to me that what lit me up was not that part of it, but just the fact that women should have a choice, no matter what that choice is. Right. Well, uh, Jordan, you're you're married. Yeah. Do you think, uh, what do you think about, you're breathing into the mic like Darth Vader. I got a cold. <sighs> By the way, if people are coming, the reason my eyes look like, um, look like sphincters, I am highly allergic to horses, did not know that until last night. Mm. So Benadryl, 
uh, which messes me up for an entire day. I imagine it's what the worst hangover Those feels like. Those long rides on the beach will get you. My eyes, were, I looked like Rocky Balboa. I was, it was swollen shut, and I felt so bad. My dad wanted to take us on this carriage ride through this neighborhood with all these nice Christmas lights, and I was just <laughs> about to go in through. I don't know if you can get anaphylactic shock from breathing. I know if you eat shellfish. I don't know, but I'd like to watch that. Well, yeah, well, I think many people would. Hence, oh. Okay, hold on. We'll go back to you, Jordan. Announcement time. I forgot about this. Announcement time next week, Wednesday, the 21st, December 21st. We're going to host the annual Crowder Christmas Telethon this year with waterboarding. So we are going to have a telethon if we hit certain benchmarks uh, on Mug Club subscribers that night where I will be waterboarded by none other than Army Ranger Tim Kennedy. Because he's qualified, it will be real waterboarding here in the studio at 500, 1,000, 1,500. When we hit 2,000 subscribers that night, I will be waterboarded live in studio. Why? Because we know so many of you want to see it. If you hate me and if you like me, you're still a little curious and you also probably want to see it. I'll be here. I know also because be. it's my job, but I'll, I'll be here. Well, you'll be here because you have to do some other horrendous things before I get waterboarded with yes. each benchmark. And we'll yeah. announce those in the coming weeks. So, Jordan, you have a wife. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what do you think? Do you think that uh, she should have the right to pepper spray? Oh, yeah. I, I, I bought her some pepper spray. Well, I, I don't think that's that. Well, that's right. You're in California. Yeah. We actually, we have a baseball bat and a taser that's never charged. That's, that's, those are the only weapons. We, I probably shouldn't say I that. never thought about that with the taser. Yeah. My wife can't, forgets to charge her iPad. We get on a plane. And it's like there's no charge. She can't watch Sister Wives or whatever freaky show she's into at that point. North Korean internment camps or multiple wives shows. She likes watching that. What about a taser? I didn't think you have to charge a taser. How often do you have to charge it? Uh, pretty much like every three days. Oh, really? So it's not like, like one of those digital doorbells where you charge a taser once and it holds it for a year. No, it's like it's kind of like a Kindle Fire. Mm. <laughs> Amazon Fire Stick. <laughs> yeah, Amazon Fire Stick. So basically what you're saying is um, if you have a taser and you give it to a woman who maybe forgets to bring her phone, I, either way, if it's needed, someone's getting raped. Pretty much. It's yeah. A completely useless weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it's an entirely useless weapon. All right, mute him so I don't have to hear his wheezing. Uh, speaking of weapons, this man's weapons, hands are registered weapons, TJ Miller. Yes. Which, by the way, I will say this preemptively. Silicon Valley is one of the funniest shows on television, on HBO. It is absolutely hysterical. I think T.J. Miller is funny in it. But T.J. Miller was arrested this week, Hollywood celebrity, you know, here, I have it up on my screen, uh, for assaulting a cab driver for supporting Donald Trump. So while we're talking about the tolerance of the left, can, can you imagine being this far out of touch where someone does, that you feel fine striking them? I mean, can you, seriously, think, think about this. People walk through their lives. A T.J. Miller, first off, he's never had his ass mm. kicked. The gelatinous bag that he is because he thinks he's funny enough to not get his ass kicked. So a guy has walked through life without ever getting his ass kicked and thinks that his decisions, this is what happens with the entertainment industry because you're surrounded by so many people whose job is dependent on kissing your posterior that you actually think there's a world that exists and you live in it where you can hit people. Hit people who are subservient to you, in your mind, like cab drivers and maids. In Arnold's case, porking Have them. Have you been to the USPS during Christmas? Oh, that's right. You had that this week. Tell people that story. That's a, so Jared was waiting on getting something for the studio. They delivered to your apartment, right? But they, yeah. they don't deliver because you're on the third floor. They won't deliver to me because I'm on the third floor. They refuse to deliver a package, a package that weighed three ounces. <laughs> I've had FedEx and poor scrawny USPS guys drag 55, 70 pound boxes up all three flights of stairs, but three ounce base plate for a tripod was a little heavy. So I go to Is there. Is it policy they don't deliver on the third floor? I don't know. I think they said they don't, they're not required to. <laughs> it's a safety hazard for all those three ounces in a box. And so, by all means, screw my Christmas. So I went to the post office to say, okay, fine, I will go. I will get my package from your office. Their office is only open from 8, eight to 5.30. Or 8, no, sorry, 8 to 6. 8 to 6. But the package facility where your packages are rerouted is open from 8.30 to 5. If you don't know this, 5 is when most people get off work. <laughs> Thereby, they cannot pick up their package. So I show up and demand my package at 5.30, like I should have done, and I did. And, well, long story short, I harassed them for half an hour ringing the doorbell because I couldn't see them or hear them. I could just talk to them and say, I'm just going to be the person to leave. 
we won't we can't deliver your package i'm like <laughs> wait I, hold on a second i say ethnic eth maybe it's all behind the screens right it's a screen door so i say okay but i'm here you're here you won't deliver to my door and you close at five therefore we have a problem you need to deliver my package now and she says we can't do that it's past five be that as it may i'm here and you're here and then she just disappears I finally saw it, so I just ring the doorbell. Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> and for Ding how long dong. did you do that? Half an hour, which felt like a lot longer than that to them, I'm sure. <laughs> and she finally comes back, and, and I can, she's on the other side, and, and I, I can hear her. I say, I'm still here. This is like 10 minutes, 15, 15 minutes later. She goes, I can just hear her digging around. No response. I can hear you. She goes, we say we're not allowed to deliver your package. I said, again be that as it may i'm here and my job depends on my productivity and results thereby i need my package to produce a result i understand you may have difficulty relating to that predicament <laughs> yes but i need my package and now anyways long story short uh or short story long it ends with me walking out screaming merry christmas a-holes <laughs> and slamming the door to which i still not receive my package i've got 30 seconds well, you're and, a hero uh, to everyone who's ever wanted to do that yeah, with the post I office i hope so and uh, you're the hero to the post office that I was to American Air when they took cash only yeah. for beer. By the way, they sent me the wrong package. Uh, when I finally got the package the next day, it was not the right thing. <laughs> now, now, what's not funny, picture that with lupus. Uh, that's true. And you have Obamacare. Uh, Cassie J coming up next. This is going to be interesting. Stay tuned. What is this place? I don't know. It seems some kind of Auschwitz for toys. No, we're in the island of misfit toys, where all the toys who are imperfect were exiled by Santa, like Hitler. But a lot of you don't even look like you have that serious a problem. Yeah, what's that asshat's problem? Oh, he's a squirt gun who only shoots jelly. He couldn't rack his brain to solve that one. Well, and there's me, a b -b 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 boat that can't stay afloat. If you're a talking boat, you can't stay afloat. You're not a boat anymore. You're a shipwreck. Oh, I've been here for years. Nobody wants to play with a Charlie in the box. Okay, Charlie, <laughs> I'm going to give you a pro tip here. If it's that much of a problem, call yourself Jack, dumbass. The only way they could even know your name is Charlie is if you're telling them. It's better to have love. All right, we are back. We have our next guest. We do. Okay, I we can do. see her. I didn't know if I could hear her. Um, all right. I know the comments that are going to occur. They're going to say, she is very, very cute for a feminist, which I know sounds horrible, but it is absolutely true, uh, of Red Pill documentary fame. Cassie J, thank you for being with us. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, I'm so glad to have you. So has this been a whirlwind for you with this documentary that's come out because it's, it's lit everything ablaze and you're accused of hate speech now and being a self-loathing woman from everything to misogyny. Um, did you expect this reaction? Uh, not to this extent. Um, and, and really the reaction to the film has made my beliefs even stronger that there's something wrong with feminism and uh, yeah, <laughs> well, they're... Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's get into that. Jared, we have a, not good, Jared, we have a clip, right? We do. Okay, we're going to roll a clip for people who don't know what we're talking about, and then let me set some context here beforehand. Cassie J created this documentary. Her position before, I won't misrepresent her, she'll describe it after the clip, was uh, that of a feminist before venturing into this research, uh, and, and it changed her opinions, and the backlash has been outrageous from some on the regressive left. Let's see the clip. Serious problems. I have been working in this area advocating for the rights of And here we go. What you'll hear Okay, well I don't know. That was a weird cut there, not kid Jerry. It was a weird cut. You really deserved to be fired. So 
Did I miss? Now, did you consider yourself a third wave feminist, classical feminist before you did this film? Uh, before this film, I didn't realize there were different uh, sectors of feminism. Uh, so I, I didn't consider whatever wave or radical versus equity. I didn't, um, you know, label myself beyond feminist. Yeah. Uh, I thought we were all just for gender equality. Right. Yeah. Well, no, that's not the case, as you learned very <laughs> soon by the butch gutted chain gang over at BuzzFeed, I'm sure. Um, so, OK, what changed? You set out and a lot of people say this, but you genuinely set out to make this film. And it, did this authentically change during the process of making the film to sort of taking the red pill and, and learning about men's rights? I'm using these terms in quotations because, you know, these are labels people have put on them. Yeah. Uh, well, so initially I, I set out to make a different film than the film that is now the Red Pill movie. Uh, I, I thought I was going to uh, film men's rights activists for a year and be a fly on the wall approach, just showing them saying, I assumed misogynistic, you know, women bashing kind of things. Right. And that, that would be the film exposing essentially this uh, underground culture of uh, misogyny. So uh, that was the film I thought I was making. And as I started to meet each men's rights activist uh, on and on until 44 people I interviewed over a year, uh, I realized that it wasn't so black and white. And the way that the mainstream media had been portraying, portraying them was not the same uh, experience that I had. And, uh, and also this kind of sideline uh, plot line was that my own feminist views were changing along the way. So I ended up deciding to include that in the film. And that, of course, was met with uh, the left accusing you of being misogynistic and and a hate speaker. Um, now, do you consider yourself? Would you consider yourself more more liberal from from what I've read? Yes, I am a registered Democrat, uh, but I also think this past year, especially, uh, something's shaken up uh, in the in the political sphere, yeah. of, at least in the U.S. And uh, I I personally know a lot of my liberal friends and myself included, uh, we're really uh, kind of annoyed and, uh, well, pretty distraught with what's happening with liberals nowadays. And yeah. I think the social justice warrior element of it is, you know, the the toxic element. Right. Well, that would so lead me to ask kind of, you know, people like Christina Hoff Summers, what, what do you think now of, or did you have a different opinion before sort of women in this side of the movement where you find yourself now? Um, and, and has your opinion on people like that changed? Because I, I you know, I've spoken with her. I've uh, on stage, I mean, with her, we've done speaking engagements and, and she is met with some of the most vitriolic hatred, ironically enough, pretty misogynist from the liberal men. Um, I think I might have heard the B word out there once or twice at UMass, uh, Cassie. W what is, has, your, has your viewpoint been on, on them before and after? Uh, well, with Christina Hoff Summers and Camille Paglia, uh, I, I, I think where I've ended up after making this film is a little different than them. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, spoiler alert, after making the film, I no longer call myself a feminist, whereas they still do. And I think, you know, they're trying to work within the movement to well, Why is it. that? Why is that important to you to, to remove even just the title feminist? So it seems like that's a proactive decision based on some sort of toxicity. Yeah, well, I, I definitely thought long and hard about, you know, should I keep the label to work within the movement and try to make, you know, better change? But uh, I realized that... It, any uh, any feminist that I interviewed spoke with, uh, you know, people at Ms., uh, the leaders and scholars of the feminist movement, my own feminist friends, and some I think would be uh, more classified as equity versus radical, but all of them across the board uh, believed in patriarchy theory. And, uh, you know, that's definitely a, a platform position that you have to believe that if you're going to mm -hmm. call yourself a feminist. And uh, also when I would say I'm making a film about the men's rights movement, all of them would say men's rights, what rights are men being denied? And so that really made me think if, if feminism is a movement for gender equality, why can I, they not say a single men's rights issue? That's a problem. That, you know, that's a good point to bring up. Uh, let's say you, you ha let's say you have a son, right? Let's create this parallel universe. Let's go quantum physics on this. Uh, for every way the world could be, there is a world which is that way. How would you feel? So I'm trying to put this in a personal way for people out there. We have a lot of, you know, moms who might be listening. So let's say you have a son. How would you feel he is disadvantaged uh, at, at this point in history? Oh, well, I just had a nephew born last week. So now I can start uh, visualizing this. Uh, oh. 
I, well, I think boys in school, uh, I've actually, I've received a lot of emails while making this film and especially since last year when we launched our Kickstarter campaign because that was when I first went public with making this film. So I got all these emails from a lot of mothers and grandmothers talking about uh, what their sons are dealing with or grandsons and a lot of what they were dealing with is uh, this kind of normalized male bashing in school uh, that, you yeah. know, it's okay to uh, tease guys, even hit guys in class and um, I, I know Karen Strawn uh, heard that, or yeah, someone she was talking to said that a girl went up to a boy in school and, and hit him and said, you can't hit me back, I'm a woman. And uh, You know, we have to go to a break soon. Can we bring you back for one more segment? Because I want to yeah, talk yeah. about this. I was kicked mercilessly in the balls in grade school in Canada because they thought it was funny. And uh, it was the one time I cried in school, and I should have. Cassie J of Red Pill fame. This is not a joke. This is true. Mercilessly, I was kicking the testicles, and platforms were in. Cassie J, after the oh, break. Well. Stay tuned. <laughs> What are you doing? Shooting bad guys. With what? By AR-15. Where'd you get it? AR-15.com. Enunciate it more clearly so our audience can hear. AR-15.com. That's better. They sell guns now? Yeah, they do. Are they any good? They're the best. Where from? AR-15.com. Kaboom. Kaboom. They really make that sound? Didn't have the budget for sound effects. Kaboom. Kaboom. Oh, there's another one. Kaboom. You got him! With what? By AR-15. From where? AR-15.com. Hey, how do you know they're bad guys? They're and burkas. Kaboom! That's racist! <laughs> oh no, the abominable snowman's back. Haven't I shown you when I mutilate beasts and take out their teeth? This is one mighty humble mumble. <laughs> Push him off a cliff. This got really dark for a children's special. We better go look over the cliff mysteriously so that we can have conflict but still convince children that everything's okay. Yeah, you're right. Let me look over. No, they're they're definitely both dead. Their their blood's all over the place. We are back, and I have to apologize. She's a very nice, nice lady uh, on the show. And I didn't realize, for people who aren't familiar with our commercial breaks, sometimes these these get a little awkward. Uh, Cassie <laughs> J, Cassie underscore J with an E. I'm sorry, Cassie. I should have warned you, but I appreciate you sticking it out. <laughs> no problem. Um, so we went to the break, and you looked very concerned. That was not a joke. I was kicked. I remember her name, Amy Leonard, in the balls. It was a trend in grade school. And uh, I just remember sitting there, I, it was so painful, and I was terrified to cry, and it's because the one time I cried in school, and the teacher didn't even, she was like, Amy, that wasn't very nice. And I thought, but Amy, not very nice, I may never have children. And um, that was the extent of it, and of course there were, there were no consequences, really. It was thought of as cute. So I know that's anecdotal, that was just your point of boys being hit. So um, we were talking about, you were talking about how you think your son might be disadvantaged in today's world. I'm sorry, the floor is yours. Yeah. Well, no, you're getting kicked in the balls a story <laughs> reminded me of something that was on my uh, Facebook feed last week. Uh, a person in, in my circle of friends wrote that uh, her daughter is now at the age where boys are snapping bra straps in the back. And uh, so all these Th That happened with me, but accidentally. I wasn't very handy. <laughs> Classic. So all these moms started commenting on Facebook and they said, if, you're, if this happens to your daughter, tell her to punch him in the throat. And so, <laughs> Jordan is. See, this is even men. Jordan's <laughs> laughing his ass off here, at, and the, the, you you just crush the kid's trachea. What is yeah, this they can kill someone if you do it hard enough. Uh, but yeah, so and this was, you know, everyone was agreeing. Yeah, that's good, you know, suggestion, and uh, I, you know, so that's you know what's happening on. Well, Facebook that's now. a cultural sort of treatment of men, right? But I know in your film you sort of address more. We use the term, you know, systemic a lot. It's overused, but sort of systemic disadvantages that men uh, or young boys would experience. 
Um, could you maybe just rattle off? I know it's I know it's yeah, numerous, yeah. but give us some of those for people out there who may not. They, a lot of people genuinely don't know about this, Cassie. That's the thing. You talk with people who are informed, but when you get outside, you realize most people have no clue that this goes on. Yeah. Okay. So going through the lifespan of a boy, uh, and this is obviously a, a very contentious issue, but uh, male genital mutilation uh, starts right at birth. Uh, in the U.S., it's one of the highest rates. Uh, and then we go into school, and boys are uh, having to adhere to female kind of ways of learning, which is mm -hmm. sitting still in the seat, and even this kind of war on recess. Uh, you know, yeah. boys need to move around and, and be active. Uh, and then going to college with affirmative action, uh, boys are, uh, you know, put uh, on the back burner, wait in line for us to get some more, more diversity in school. Yes. And, yeah. but they also Quazy have is room. getting the, the, the spot before a man named Clarence, generally. What? I was saying Quasi, uh, particularly if, I was trying to pick an ethnic name, is going to get that <laughs> oh. slot before a man named Clarence. But that is, that is true. Okay. Interestingly, I want to hit that point because you, you, you skimmed past it, and I, I think you've talked about this. Um, you know, boys do much poorly, they do much more poorly than, than girls in school, but they actually do better. They outperform them on the SATs. And that mm -hmm. shows you when they're allowed to study in their own element, when they're allowed to take their own time and, and learn the way men process information. I'm not saying men are smarter, but your floor. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, so less boys enroll in college now and also lesser earning degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, but we still, you know, very much live in a kind of hypergamy culture, if you're familiar with that. So girls want to marry up. And so here are all these, you know, college educated women going, going to med school and then uh, getting out of college and saying we're all the good men. But it's because, you know, girls like to marry up, marry into, you know, a higher status than they currently have. And uh, so we have failure to launch with boys, boys that are still staying in their parents, you know, basement, um, gaming, pornography is uh, some issues once it's, you know, taken to an extreme level. Uh, and let's see, later in life, obviously family, that's, I think that's really when men's rights activists start to join the movement is mm -hmm. during uh, family court and so custody battle, battles, alimony. Uh, and what I found with uh, making the red pill is that feminist organizations have uh, historically fought joint custody legislation. Yeah. Uh, so, so family court, obviously, and then later in life. And, the, and actually, single moms are more likely to abuse a child than single fathers. A lot of people don't know that. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah. Karen Strawn talked about that. Yeah, actually, abuse is, domestic abuse is higher in lesbian couples, marginally, not by a huge amount, mind you. And women are more likely to abuse, particularly if they're boys, their children, than, than men. And, and, and that kind of makes sense when you think about it, because, you know, it goes back to the kicking in the ball story. It's, it's, they've been conditioned that it's not as bad. And listen, I'm not going to lie. It's not as bad. And, and the reason why is because when men hit a, a woman, we've been told this is sexist to say, most women in this situation are, are relatively powerless physically, right? They, the man can overpower them. In the opposite case, it's usually not true. Not saying it's acceptable, but um, my wife's uh, given me a swat or two, and I, I deserved it. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, and also, uh, you know, if the police are called to a domestic violence situation, uh, the automatic assumption is that he's uh, the primary aggressor. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because of his size, uh, even though women use objects and weapons more often in domestic violence situations. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is an equalizer. Uh, but, true. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, L let me ask you this then, kind of moving, and that's, that's true, and people can go, where's the best place for people to find this film, Cassie? TheRedPillMovie.com. TheRedPillMovie.com. Okay, so you're making this, you're thinking you're starting off as a feminist, kind of like, I remember in, in Parks and Rec, Amy Poehler said, stop saying about men's rights, it's not a thing, it's not even a real thing. I remember watching that, and it was so dismissive, I was going, oh my gosh, how elitist can you be? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're, you're in that mind frame. Then you're learning, right, which is kind of the purpose of a documentary. You're learning, your mind is opening, oh, this isn't what I thought it was. As that happens, did you at that point realize or think that you were going to be met with the banning from film festivals, the trying to ban it from countries? At that point, did you think, okay, this could go into some murky territory, or were you still unaware of today's left and their reactions? Uh, well, so we released the film about two months ago, and uh, when we did release the film, I, I certainly was uh, concerned with how people included in the film or what they were going to think of the film because no one had seen the film before the premiere. Uh, but the film is extremely balanced and it let everyone speak in context. And and uh, so I thought, you know, I was going to have the same kind of reactions from my previous films, which is saying that, yeah, it's a you know very complex issue and the filmmaker took a very balanced approach and wanted to let all sides have their time to speak. And, uh, you know, ultimately with all my films, I've just wanted to other, I wanted my audiences to 
understands uh, the gray area that I came to learn by making whatever films I've been making over the years. And so that's the same, the same with the red pill. But then the backlash with, you know, being banned in Melbourne and Sydney being pulled from a theater there and then um, Ottawa and a mm. petition in Berlin. Uh, so we've had a lot of resistance uh, to this film. And, you know, at the time I was like, you know, this is so silly and this is censor censorship and, sure. uh, you know, and I'm glad it did inspire a free speech kind of conversation. But also I'm, uh, I'm okay with what's happened because once the film is worldwide, uh, available worldwide online in a couple months, uh, I think, you know, all those protests are going to look so silly because the film itself is extremely balanced and we do let everyone have their say. Um, so but isn't that indicative of, and I know we've said that there's been a, a shakeup in the political sphere, but isn't that indicative of, of really only one side of the political spectrum today where what you just, for example, you said you're more liberal, you're a registered Democrat. We just had Sally Cohn on and Alex Jones and then you talk about an eclectic mix. I don't need you to agree with me on everything, right? If you go out after this and say, hey, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pro-abortion, pro-choice, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I think she's wrong on that issue and we can discuss it. But it really is the left who goes, she went off the reservation on the feminism thing. We have to stop her. Has that been an awakening experience? Yes, because I'm, I'm not a men's rights activist. I've, I haven't even become a conservative uh, by making this film, uh, but I definitely feel uprooted. I, I feel like my entire uh, worldview has... I, now I feel like I'm in a blank slate uh, after making this film. I don't know what to believe anymore because I saw so much uh, false reporting about me and the film from these liberal media sources that I've always <laughs> read and trusted, uh, like The Guardian. Uh, right. you know, Vice is one of the worst. Now, I mean, so I'm able to see uh, how much my own story has been twisted out of context and made me to look like a misogynist and a, a racist and all these things. But it's so much so, easier to do that because you're pretty. You must be aware that feminists. That's like it's like a they focus in like a laser beam. Pretty blonde girl. We have to stop her. I, I, I don't know. I guess so. I, I mean, it's extremely upsetting that there are so many feminists who have gone on the direct attack towards me when I think the film advocates for gender equality. And that's really all it's, it's doing. And, and we did have a, a major feminist, Dr. Michael Kimmel, who was included in my film. Right. He attended the world premiere and he was a part of the Q&A after the screening. And he even said, I don't see anything in this film that's not in the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment, that all people should be treated equally regardless of their gender. So in, in that scenario i feel like he was you know indirectly endorsing the film saying he agrees yeah. with what's in the film but still all of you know his compadres are uh oh taking, you can't say you know, that there's gonna be this is gonna be written racist <laughs> bad hombres oh. that's your bad hombres moment oh. um so his own side you know they've drawn a, a line in the sand and said she's no longer with us um and they also uh you know started to attack me before the film was even released well, let me ask you this so. does that give you like you've read it we talked about this first segment the the facebook now is going to label and bury fake news and on their council to determine what's fake is going to be abc news and Snopes and I'm sure some people at NBC. I had this kind of awakening uh, earlier on, but reading this stuff about you from supposedly legitimate publications that you know is fabricated or you know is false, does that make you concerned with the people who are allies? To, I mean, Facebook, Guardian, Twitter, they're going to be determining what's real and fake when we know they fake it? It's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And, and it's scary to think that I wouldn't even realize how uh, messed up the media is if it weren't for this past year with the release of this film. Uh, but now, you know, the only thing that I know for certain without, uh, without any question is my own story and my own film and who I am. And so being able to see how I've been, you know, twisted by the media is there's, you know, I know for fact that, you know, Vice is lying, The Guardian is lying, Village Voice is lying. And uh, and I also know there's <laughs> these random bloggers, these troll, you know, liberal leaning bloggers who are the ones uh, cooking up the stories and yeah. they're feeding it to the mainstream. And I swear, okay, this is something that I, I absolutely believe. Well, uh, you, when be, I was, be warned, you have to follow up kicking in the ball story, so it better be good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so when I was uh, making the red pill, the, the main go-to uh, cherry-picked sound by, by a voice for men, Paul Elam, uh, so he's one of the leaders in the men's rights movement, the cherry-picked sound by it was he said, October should be Bash of Violent Bitch Month. And it was satirical. It was to make a bigger point about, you know, men should defend themselves. But that was the go-to cherry-picked comment that the liberal media used to attack the men's rights movement. So I include that in the film because everyone was talking about that. 
So then the film was released and these liberal blogger realized that I debunked that quote. So, uh, you know, this one troll blogger who I'm not going to mention, I don't want to give him any more press than he has. Uh, He's probably a he pedophile at so <laughs> mm. So he decided, I, I th I'm pretty sure it was him. He, <laughs> I, I swear, it's like, it's like he has a window and it's like a, a ticket man to, to get on the train or something. And mm -hmm. so mainstream liberal sources are going to his little ticket window and he said, oh, they, she already debunked that quote. Okay, let me find another quote from Polly Lum. Okay, right. use this one. And then every mainstream media source said, why don't you call out Polly Lum's quote in your film when he said X, Y, Z? And it's, it's, so it's, they're changing, you know, constantly changing right. the Right, that's what they do. They want to make you defend something that even you believe is indefensible. And here's the thing, it doesn't matter. If you say like, well, I disagree with that quote, they'll pull out another one. And that's the point is these people aren't your friends. I will say one thing here. I don't know if this is misogynist of me telling you something, but Cassie, you are no longer a liberal. The way you just spoke, that is not, or, or certainly not a progressive. Uh, accept it now. Be water, my friend. You can put water in a cup. It becomes that cup. That's Bruce Lee, also a sexist. Cassie J. There you go. Oh, wow. Mug club. That's, we're going to have to get her a mug, not gay, yes. Jared. Red pill documentary. Cassie, will you come back and join us in the future? Of course. Some I would love to. Horrible conservatives. Thank you so much, Cassie J. We are going to wrap this show up. And a nice bow for you, but a masculine bow. Maybe gender neutral bow. Let's, let's go gender neutral. What's that, yellow? Can you do yellow? Uh, we'll work on it. I don't know. We'll, we'll get it. Just give them both an Oscar. Okay. I was wrong all this time, Rudolph. Here we are in this storm, and you, the misfit, saved us. I guess what I'm trying to say is, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh to- No, seriously, Santa, screw you. Yeah, you're just using him now because you need him during a storm. What happens when the weather's clear outside? Little Rudolph here will be venison faster than you can say Merry Christmas. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. I'm up here, you big horse's ass. Ha ha! What are you talking about? I'll do it. I'll jump. Okay, well, hold on. Just calm down. Okay, we love you. It's Christmas. I don't believe you. All right, okay, hold on a second. You believe in Christmas? Obviously. Do you believe in Santa? Yes. Okay, and do you believe in the mug club that people can join for $99 annually or $69 annually if they're students, vets, or active military, gaining access to all of CRTV as well as daily Crowder programming? Well, of course. That's why I'm here. Okay, well, now I'm asking you to believe in me. Just come on down. We'll talk about this. Everyone wants to be together for Christmas. I could come down. Or I could choose freedom! Ah! <laughs> That's so much more awkward when it's just you it bad? watching the dancing. I'm okay, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. That was Cassie exactly. J. She was fantastic. We have to have her back. She was good. She was really good. And she had this your little mug club thing? She was great. Yeah, I don't know how she... I, I mean, I don't know if we should compliment her or sue her for stealing our mug. I don't know. That wasn't a legitimate <laughs> mug at all. <laughs> That's a what counterfeit. It is a counterfeit. It was made by Cassie J. Probably, okay. Probably made in Taiwan, too. I bet you. China. I bet you. Mexico, we're going to punish all the Cassie J's for taking our jobs with the... Okay, they're going to bring the bugs back here. Um, uh, appreciate it. Sally Cohn, Alex Jones. 
Cassie J, all of whom, you know, we probably have maybe at least 50% on which we disagree. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't been looking forward to this segment all week, but it's a necessary one. Um, I had a friend this week who uh, passed away, who really uh, had an impact on my life more than I realized until this happened. Um, Seymour Singer. And Tammy, if you're watching, I'm very sorry. Um, and I hate it when people go out and act as though they were best friends. You know, we were very close for a period. I remember the last time I spoke with him was about a year ago. Remember where I was and Ron the Handy, you know Ron the Handyman. Ron the Handyman, his, his parking, um, his driveway while working on a motorcycle. Anyways, that's, not, that's neither here nor there. This was a time in my life. I was 19 years old in Los Angeles. And I don't want to oversell this. It wasn't like I was destitute. I always had parents. They were in Texas or, or Montreal, depending on the year. I could have always gone back home, but I did decide to go out and, and do things on my own. I was in Los Angeles. I had an 82 Datsun. I've talked about this. And um, I didn't have a place to stay for a while. I was couch surfing. I slept a few nights in my car. It wasn't like Jewel. I didn't live out of my car with my mom, but I slept a few nights in my car. I remember my, my dad calling our church from Texas, had a network out there of people, and he was saying, hey, you know, my son needs a place to stay. Could you guys just help him for a little bit? He, he just needs to bridge a gap. And they wouldn't even return his calls. I don't say this to try and, and, and sort of vilify Christians. I say this because this is an actual experience. And my uncle set me up with his friend, Seymour Singer, never met him before in my life, was a liberal, secular, atheist, agnostic Jew. And that night, after two nights of sleeping in my car, when I drove in to his apartment complex in Hollywood, um, he laughed, made fun of me as I drove in this crappy 82 Datsun and took me in that night and gave me a place to stay that night and gave me food and took me out with his family. And I stayed there for several months. And he always, it's funny, he always called me, he was, he was a crass man. He always called me, you know, like, oh, you silly Gentile prick or something like that. Sorry. And I used to call him big league Jew. That was the term I had. And why does that matter? It matters because we were people who agreed on virtually nothing. And we, we basically lived together. Um, they could tell you an incident that occurred with pumpkin beer and Ambien, which became legendary in the household. Um, it taught me a couple of things. First off, it taught me that just because someone puts on a team jersey or a label, this was a guy who you would anticipate wouldn't think that way or treat people that way. But unlike some of the people who we thought were, who could be Christians, um, this guy showed me how to treat people in a way that I even said, because of Seymour, I spoke with my parents. We took in someone uh, later on who was a part of a friend of mine, a part of a car wreck. I said, we're never going to be the people who turn somebody away. We can't. And that's how my household's going to change. And that is entirely because of. Seymour. And the reason we've had people who disagree with us, for example, tonight, Sally Cohn, you've heard me talk about this so many times, don't question their motive, don't question somebody's motive, argue the ideas. Why? Because I spent months under a roof with a man, a family, who didn't agree with me on anything politically, but I owed my, my, I owed my home to them. I owed the fact that I was eating to them at that point when I was out there in Los Angeles. And never could I question a guy like, like him. I couldn't question his heart. I think he was even on abortion, even on issues that I think are, 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 are moral imperatives. He was wrong on virtually all of them. And I will tell you this, I think that my ideas are better. I still do. And I think they would have improved his life, both his life professionally, personally, as a father, as a husband, as a worker. I really do. I think the way I see the world would be a more productive, healthy way for him to view the world. But I can't say that he didn't care about the world. I can't say that somehow I was uh, better than him in the way I was trying to help the world. You can be right and be an ass, and you can be wrong and still be someone who's, who's trying to do the right thing. And it really, when this, this, this happened, it, 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 it impacted me in a way that I didn't realize that a big part of who I am and a big part of what this show is um, that you hear when you see the way we interact with a Sally Cohn, when you see the way we interact with uh, a Christopher Titus or whoever it is, and you see the difference between, I, I obviously love the guy. Uh, I think we, you know, we posted the Tucker Carlson's of the world, the people who set out to destroy people of voices of opposition. And I'd like to, to, to think that 
we try to do some convincing. I'd like to think that the reason a huge bulk of our audience is liberal or don't agree with me is because I treat these conversations the way I would in uh, in Seymour's apartment on his couch. To give an idea as to what a sweet guy he was, I remember he had an entire apartment uh, complex. This is where it, we lived in Hollywood. There was, you know, four apartments, and three of them were entirely finished. And when I first went over, they put me in the one that was being renovated, and uh, I had an inflatable mattress, which they gave me. And I turned him at one point. I think, you know, I just kind of bother my allergies. It's a little dusty up there where the floors aren't done. Do you think I could stay in one of the apartments that's finished? And he, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And he came back later. He said, I'm so sorry that I, I, I didn't. I, I, he felt bad. He'd given me a place to stay when, when no one else would. And he felt bad that he didn't do enough. And um, I'm just going to miss the guy. And the guy really impacted me. And I just wanted to don't question the motives and uh, try and be more like a guy like that.